Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Welcome to Entertainment Now on UMI Radio, WUMEDB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment. But with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Get fit. Mind, body and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8:30 a.m. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to business and branding with Show. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. It's Weekends with Jesse, a resource for the community. Black health is black wealth. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Be the light. You're watching. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Entertainment Now on UMI Radio, WUMEDB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment. But with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Here is today's hot topic. Trailblazing actor and civil rights activist, Sidney Poitier transitions at the age of 94, the Bahamian Minister of Foreign Affairs announced Friday. The breaking news courtesy of Deadline reports that Hollywood and the nation are mourning a Hollywood pioneer, and the tributes were flooding across the internet. According to Deadline, former President Barack Obama paid tribute to Sidney Poitier on Friday, calling him a singular talent who epitomized dignity and grace. Other tributes poured in from Viola Davis, Oprah Winfrey, Morgan Freeman, and others paying tribute to Sidney Poitier, an absolute legend and warm, genuinely regal man. Tyler Perry shared on Instagram that his heart broke upon hearing the news of Poitier's death. The grace and class that this man has shown throughout his entire life, the example he set for me, not only as a black man, but as a human being, will never be forgotten, Perry wrote. Viola Davis posted on her Twitter, No words can describe how your work radically shifted my life. The dignity, normalcy, strength, excellence, and sheer electricity you brought to your roles showed us that we, as black folks, mattered. It was an honor. Morgan Freeman also posted on Twitter, Sydney was my inspiration, my guiding light, my friend. Sending love to Joanna and his family. Whoopi Goldberg quoted lyrics from To Sir, With Love, the title song from Poitiers' 1967 film. If you wanted the sky, I would write across the sky, in letters that would soar a thousand feet high. To Sir, With Love, adding, he showed us how to reach for the stars. Denzel Washington said, it was a privilege to call Sidney Poitier my friend. 
He was a gentle man and opened doors for all of us that had been closed for years. God bless him and his family. Questlove called Poitier, one of the greatest actors of his generation, in an Instagram post. You already know I can spew paragraphs of what his activism represented, especially in a time that his accolades were happening during the civil rights era, but man this is more of a personal reflect, because of the bonding his 70s movies did for my family and I. Rest in peace. And thank you, Questlove wrote. Yuzo Aduba wrote on Twitter, the blueprint, the original, a way maker. A singular icon who created vision for so many to dream, including me. Thank you, Mr. Sidney Poitier. Here at Yumi Radio, we just want to salute this great man for his contributions and the foundation he laid, so that we can do what we love. Condolences to his families and friends. That is it for today's hot topic. Spotlighting 50 black actors who will be featured in our history books, 50 black actors who paved the way for future generations to continue the legacy. Each actor has achieved a different milestone in different genres, waves, and decades of film and TV. And, we agree. This list of actors who made entertainment history is compiled through news articles and profiles and represents actors of all genders and various countries of origin. Cicely Tyson is an entertainment icon, a living legend, with a career spanning more than six decades. She was the first black person to star in a primetime drama in the 60s. Tyson has made history numerous times with her acting performances and her ability to break records and pave the way for black women in entertainment. In 2018, she became the first black actress to receive an honorary Academy Award and was inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame in 2020. Patty McDaniel showed true strength and hope as a black woman in Hollywood in the 1940s. Because of her color, McDaniel was forced to sit in the backroom inside the Academy Awards segregated venue when she became the first black person to win an Oscar for the film Gone with the Wind. She was not allowed to attend the film's premiere and was often criticized for her portrayal of the racist stereotype, the mammy. Still, she paved the way for black representation in the film industry. Angela Bassett is another notable name in black Hollywood, well known for her role portraying Tina Turner in the emotional classic, What's Love Got To Do With It? Since then, she's appeared and starred in countless films, representing black culture, such as Waiting To Exhale and Black Panther. Bassett has also portrayed some of the most iconic women in history, including Rosa Parks, Katherine Jackson, Coretta Scott King and Betty Shabazz. Spike Lee has made his fair share of marks in the film industry as a writer, director, producer, and actor. He made his directorial debut with She's Gotta Have It in 1986, but in 1989, Do the Right Thing placed Lee on the map as a notable filmmaker and actor internationally. Since then, he's gone on to make numerous films that tell the story of black livelihood in America, including Malcolm X, for Little Girls, and Black KK Klansman, which won an Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay in 2019. One of the most prominent names to have paved the way for all black actors in Hollywood, Sidney Poitier, has been continually honored for his endeavors throughout his career as an actor, director, and author. Known as the godfather to black Hollywood, Poitier broke barriers in the United States and became the first black actor to win an Academy Award for Best Actor in Lilies of the Field in 1964. Chadwick Boseman did a lot for black history with his dynamic portrayals of African-American figures throughout his tragically short acting career. He has portrayed historical figures such as Jackie Robinson in 42, James Brown in Get Up, and Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall in Marshall. Boseman became a household name when he starred as the Black Panther in the film Black Panther, which became the ninth highest grossing film of all time at $1.3 billion. The second black man to win a Best Actor Academy Award for his performance in Training Day in 2001, Denzel Washington, has made his mark in entertainment history and broke barriers with his powerful performances. He has been described as an actor who reconfigured the concept of classic movie stardom by film historian Donald Bogle. 
Some of his most notable films include, Glory, Remember the Titans, Philadelphia, Malcolm X, He Got Game, and Fences, which he directed. Ethel Waters began her career in the 1920s, singing the blues in the midst of the Great Migration. She became the first black woman to integrate into Broadway, and was well known to play by her own rules. Waters was the first black person to star in her own television series, The Ethel Waters Show on NBC in 1939, and the first to be nominated for a Primetime Emmy in 1962 for her appearance on Route 66. Before she was an opinionated moderator on The View, Whoopi Goldberg established herself as an all-around award winner, joining the small group of EGOT winners or people who have won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award. Goldberg won a Best Actress Golden Globe in 1985 for The Color Purple, a Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album in 1986, a Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Ghost in 1990, and a Tony Award for her work as producer of the 2002 production of Thoroughly Modern Millie on Broadway. In 2002, Halle Berry became the first black woman to win an Oscar for Best Actress for her work in Monsters Ball. To this day, Berry remains the first and only black actress to take home an Oscar in the leading category. The leading lady of Catwoman claimed the win is one of her biggest heartbreaks as no other black woman has ever won this honor. Early in his career, Eddie Murphy won national attention as a member of television's Saturday Night Live cast. In addition to his majorly successful stand-up comedic career, he made cult classics such as Coming to America and Beverly Hills Cop, which was the highest-grossing film released in 1984. The famous comedian has had a thriving acting career, starring in such films as The Nutty Professor, Dr. Doolittle, The Voice of Donkey in Shrek, and Dream Girls. With a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a Tony Award, and three Emmys, Debbie Allen is one of the most influential names in the entertainment industry. Well known for her dance choreography and director roles, Allen is also a talented actress, starring in television shows in The House and Grey's Anatomy. In 2001, she opened her dance studio, the Debbie Allen Dance Academy, in Los Angeles. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, a third-generation wrestler and headliner of WrestleMania 28, the most successful pay-per-view event ever for the WWE shifted to acting in 2004 and became one of the highest-grossing actors of all time, earning more than $10 billion worldwide. Johnson slowly integrated himself into the film industry as a career switch and became one of the most recognizable faces to hit the big screen in films such as The Game Plan, The Fast and Furious and Jumanji franchises. Born in London, Daniel Kaluuya has had a breakout couple of years on the big screen. In 2017, Kaluuya starred in Get Out, a film critically praised worldwide. He earned a nomination for an Academy Award, Golden Globe Award, Screen Actors Guild Award, and a British Academy of Film and Television Arts Award for Best Actor. He also appears in Black Panther, Widows, and Queen and Slim. Gail Fisher got her start and climbed her way up the entertainment headlines as Peggy Fair on Mannix, a television show in the 70s. Fisher won two Golden Globe Awards and an Emmy Award, and this made her the first black actress to win either award in the supporting category. She was also the first black actress to appear on a television commercial with a speaking role. Tyler Perry has a true and inspiring rags-to-riches story that put him in billionaire status. In the 1990s, Perry birthed Medea, which has become one of his most well-known and fan-favorite characters to date, for her sassy attitude and her representation of the protective, black grandmother figure really Perry in drag apparel. After producing stage plays with the character, he went on to produce and star in many feature-length films and television shows. He created an entertainment studio that various production companies use in Atlanta. Mother to actor and musician, Lenny Kravitz, Roxy Roker, became a household name as Helen Willis on the popular sitcom The Jeffersons, where she made television history by becoming one half of the first interracial couples to appear on primetime television. After this, she went on to act in other projects and garnered a Tony Award nomination. Laverne Cox made television history in 2014 
when she became the first openly transgender person to be nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award in any acting category for her role on Netflix's Orange is the New Black. An activist and outspoken advocate for transgender rights, especially in the entertainment industry, Cox was the first transgender person to be featured on the cover of Time magazine. The first black woman to own her own production company, Harpo Productions, to be nominated for an Oscar for her first movie and to be television's highest paid entertainer, Oprah Winfrey is a hugely influential household name. Once a local journalist, she transformed herself into one of the biggest talk show hosts of her time, reaching 15 million people a day. She's also acted in several films, most notably as Sophia in The Color Purple. Funny and on point, Monique brings out the laughs from the stage to the audience every time. In 2009, Monique garnered critical praise for her role as Mary Lee Johnston in the film, Precious, for which she won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. The role also won her the Sundance Film Festival Special Jury Prize and the African American Film Critics Association AAFCA, Best Supporting Actress Award, with first-ever unanimous vote in an acting category. Time magazine ranked Monique's outstanding performance as the best female performance of 2009. Monique was not a part of Stacker.com's list, but there was no way we could exclude her based on her achievements. Lupita Nyong'o's skills caught the eyes of director Steve McQueen, who cast her in the film 12 Years a Slave, just weeks before she graduated from Yale School of Drama. For her performance in this role, she won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in 2014. Since then, she's made her mark in both the Star Wars franchise and the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Black Panther. Before becoming the funny man on the big screen, Kevin Hart began his career as a stand-up comedian, often performing small shows. After placing his shows on film, Hart soon made his way into Hollywood. In 2015, he became the first comedian to headline and sell out an NFL football stadium for a stand-up comedy show, making history. Since then, he has become popular on big and small screens with movies, hosting gigs, and other projects. Harry Belafonte was the first black person in entertainment history to win an Emmy Award in 1960. Six years earlier, the actor, singer, and activist also became the first black man to win a Tony Award. Belafonte also made a breakthrough in music, outside of his acting career, introducing Trinidadian, Caribbean music, to a more mainstream audience. Felicia Rashad first gained notoriety for playing Claire Huxtable on The Cosby Show, which garnered her two Emmy nominations. Later in her career, she became the first black woman to win a Best Actress Tony Award for her performance in the play, A Raisin in the Sun. She broke barriers portraying a black woman on primetime television, who was a lawyer. A man of many talents, Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino, is not only an actor, but a musical artist, who won Grammys in the categories for Record of the Year, Song of the Year, Best Rap Slash Sung Performance, and Best Music Video, for his hip-hop song, This Is America. The singer, actor, comedian, and writer is mostly known in Hollywood for his character in the show, Atlanta, which he also created. Anika Noni Rose is known for voicing Princess Tiana, Disney's first black animated princess, in The Princess and the Frog, which came out in 2009. Her film career includes the role of Laurel Robinson in Dreamgirls, she won a Tony Award for Best Featured Actress in a musical for Caroline or Change and was nominated for a Tony Award for her appearance in a revival of A Raisin in the Sun. This actress has put her audience in awe of her performances on Broadway, but furthermore, she has won six Tony Awards, which is more than any other actor and is the only person to win in all four acting categories. Audra McDonald also has extensive television experience, as well as film appearances. In 2016, McDonald was awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Barack Obama for her achievements. Kiki Palmer has been gracing the big and small screens since she was 11. She made history as the first black woman to host the Video Music Awards. During her run on Nickelodeon's True Jackson, VP, she was the fourth highest-paid child star on television, 
and she was the first black woman to play Cinderella on Broadway. Vanessa Williams was credited early in her career as the first black woman to be crowned Miss America in 1984. Following the revelation of questionable events, however, Williams was stripped of her crown. Nonetheless, Williams went on to have a thriving acting career and received multiple Grammy and Emmy nominations for her work. Quavenjane Wallace is best known for her 2014 adaptation of the titular character in Annie. She was the first black actor to portray the character in a feature-length film. She is also the youngest actress ever to be nominated for a Best Actress Oscar. She has since published several children's books. The year 2017 was a groundbreaking year for Jordan Peele, as the director of the critically praised film Get Out. He became the first black screenwriter to win the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay in 2018. Not only this, but Peele's film will go down in history as one of the greatest thrillers to star a black character and center around a black theme. The 72nd Emmy Awards was the first ever to be held virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But what made the night even more historic was Zendaya's win for her role as Rue on HBO's Euphoria, she became the youngest person to win Best Lead Actress in a Drama. At 24 years old, Zendaya won against Sandra O. Oh, Jennifer Aniston, Olivia Colman, and Laura Linney. A civil rights activist and Broadway star, Ossie Davis, is well known for his Broadway performances and outspoken politics for the black community. Davis hit his break, playing a role in Broadway's A Raisin in the Sun, and was inducted into the Theatre Hall of Fame in 1994. He is also well known for raising money in the 60s for the Freedom Writers' cause. The 90s was a pivotal period in Wesley Snipes' career. With films like New Jack City, White Men Can't Jump, and Passenger 57 under his belt, he was one of the most discussed upcoming artists during this time. The legacy he created for black actors and filmmakers still has impact today. Richard Pryor is credited for bringing a new storytelling style of comedy to the stage and is a major influence on comedians today. Pryor won an Emmy Award in 1973 and five Grammy Awards in the following years for his performance on stage and in his concert movies. In the 1980 film, Stir Crazy, directed by Sidney Poitier, Pryor stars as one half of a comedic duo with Gene Wilder, who worked with Pryor on many projects, including Blazing Saddles. In 1968, Diane Carroll made television history as the first black actress to star in the primetime TV series, Julia, portraying a black woman in a non-stereotypical way, not the usual domestic worker. Popular shows like Dynasty, The Hollywood Palace, and The Love Boat all made Carroll a household name throughout the 70s. In 1974, she received an Oscar Best Actress nomination for her work in Claudine, a film she appeared in with James Earl Jones. Born and raised on the south side of Chicago, Bernie Mac rose to fame as a stand-up comedian and became one of his generation's most well-known actors. He joined his fellow comedians in the comedy film, The Original Kings of Comedy, starring himself, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and D.L. Hughley. He was the star of his own show, The Bernie Mac Show, which gained him two Emmy nominations. In 2017, Viola Davis became the first black actress ever to win Oscar, Emmy, and Tony Awards for her roles in the drama category. Her supporting role in Doubt, alongside Meryl Streep, proved she was a talent that could stand with some of the greatest names in Hollywood. For this, she received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. After rising to fame in the 80s as a member of the rap group NWA, Ice Cube was introduced to film after being cast for Boys in the Hood, a film famously quoted and praised for its visual representation of black livelihood in but not limited to South Central Los Angeles. He went on to appear in other films including Friday, which he co-wrote, The Players Club, which he directed, and was the executive producer of Straight Outta Compton. John Witherspoon had a 40-year career in movies and television, and he's most remembered for his role in Friday as the character played by Ice Cube's father. 
He's had many roles in movies such as Boomerang and television series such as The Wayans Brothers and The Boondocks. During these now famous roles, Witherspoon became a notable figure to the black community and a father-like role model. Dorothy Dandridge was the first black person to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress in Carmen Jones in 1954 and a Golden Globe in 1959 for Best Actress in Porgy and Bess. As a young black singer and actress in the 30s, she often felt the impact of prejudices toward her skin color and faced segregation and racism. She was allowed to sing on stage but not permitted to eat or socialize in the clubs where she performed. Dave Chappelle is critically praised for his significant impact on black culture and comedy. He made a mark in the entertainment industry, starring as himself in his own show, Chappelle's Show in the early 2000s. He has also had his fair share in feature films, such as The Nutty Professor and Undercover Brother. Will Smith, started as rapper, The Fresh Prince in 1985, starred in his own television show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and has appeared in blockbuster films for the past 25 years. The most bankable star worldwide, according to Forbes, Smith is the only actor to have eight consecutive films gross over $100 million at the box office. He received Oscar nominations for Best Actor for his role as Muhammad Ali in Ali in 2001 and as a stockbroker in The Pursuit of Happiness in 2006. Chuatel Ejiofor has received numerous awards for his works in acting and many people know him as the lead character, Solomon Northup, in 12 Years a Slave. His breakthrough came when Ejiofor, who was 19 at the time, caught the attention of Steven Spielberg, who added him to the cast of Amistad. Kerry Washington portrayed the character Olivia Pope in the hit primetime show Scandal and became the first black woman to headline a network TV drama since 1974. She is one of the highest paid television actresses, with a number of major roles under her belt in films such as Ray, Django Unchained, and American Son. Lena Horne was a singer, actress, civil rights activist, and one of the top black performers of her time. She often refused roles that portrayed racial stereotypes to better black representation in Hollywood. Horn appeared on Broadway in more than 300 performances of her show Lena Horn, The Lady and Her Music, among her many accomplishments during a 70-year career. A popular actress in the 70s, Gloria Hendry, gained popularity being one of the first black Bond girls after showcasing her on-screen romance to James Bond in Live and Let Die. When the film debuted in South Africa, many of her love scenes were cut from the film due to the apartheid government. Pearl Bailey was an extraordinary black entertainer who learned to sing in church and left high school to hone her entertainment skills in small-town theaters with the big bands. She recorded albums with Count Basie and appeared in nightclubs with Cab Calloway and his band. In 1946, she debuted in a Broadway musical and in 1947, her first film. In 1967, Bailey was back on Broadway for her Tony Award-winning portrayal of Dolly Levi in an all-black production of Hello, Dolly. In 1971, she hosted the Pearl Bailey Show on television. Lena Waithe is a woman of many talents. As a writer, she created the dramas The Chai, Boomerang, and 20s for Showtime. She appears in Netflix's Master of None and became the first black woman to win an Emmy Award for Outstanding Writing for a Comedy Series for its episode Thanksgiving. Waithe has showcased her writing, acting, and production talents for some of television's most popular shows. John Legend is widely known for his vocal and piano skills in his musical career, but what many don't know is, he was the first black man and second black person to reach EGOT status, winner of Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Awards. Movies like Glory and theatrical productions like Jitney, aside from his music, made him a name to be reckoned with in the entertainment industry. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. 
positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Welcome to Entertainment Now on Uni Radio, WUNEDD New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment, but with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Get fit. Mind, body, and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. It's Weekends with Jesse, a resource for the community. Black Health is Black Wealth. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Be the light. You're watching. Apostle Faith Live, with children, reading Bible stories. To be on the show, go to wamo.org forward slash media, to apply. Tune in every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. For every child, everywhere. Do not miss out on the fun. Keep watching. Let's talk. Relationships. On You, Me, Radio. So what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business. And love, emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty. And DJ KTE. On everything from hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationships. Arguments for the grown. Get the UME Radio app to listen wherever you are. That is UME Radio one word underneath it all who are we sexually bible cufflinks and stilettos with giselle saint james monday nights at 10 p.m for mature audiences only Entertainment 24 7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Get fit. Mind, body, and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8 30 a.m. Good morning to. Uh... Everybody in the world that's watching, good morning to my family and friends. Good morning to the weekend show and you and me radio. Man, I'm just grateful for this 2022. I hope everyone had a blessed first day of 2022. And let's just kick it off right. You know, this is the first show. This is the first show of the year. Uh, We're doing things differently. We're doing it bigger. We're doing it greater. We're just thankful for today. I'm thankful for today. And um, man, new year, this new year, this 2022 year is going to be special. Believe it. Trust it. Um, Man, when you hear it, go for it. Understand that everything that you've been asking for and praying for is coming to life. Because I know with my dreams, they're coming to life. 
It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what someone tries to do. Not a person, place, or a thing is going to stop me because I can't stop myself. And I know the God that I serve is going to make a way for me. So I trust in the Lord uh, with all my heart that he will do it. So congratulations to everybody making it through 2022. And um, let's have a healthy, loving, prosperous uh, uh, 2022. Let's just keep it going. Let's stay motivated. Let's stay encouraged. And let's just keep believing for it. So uh, first prayer for Get Fit with DeAndre. I'm going to start off with the prayer. And I'm going to give you a Bible verse. So the Bible verse is Proverbs 16 and 20. New Living Translation. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. So I am just grateful and thankful for that right now. And I'm just excited. So, yes, my name is DeAndre Burrell. I am a certified personal trainer, an impact speaker, a former pro athlete. So I used to play in the NFL. Those of you who are new on this show, played in the NFL for about three years, played a lot of indoor football, won a championship ring, and also uh, played overseas. And that was a great experience. So uh, that's what I do. Uh, I am a performance health and wellness coach. And I know God's going to take it a long way. And whether that's helping you perform as an athlete, perform in your personal life, uh, is to maximize your performance. So with that being said, I need to go ahead and maximize my performance. And I just ask God to send the people my way to help me and uh, send me knowledge and wisdom. So I'm going to start off with the prayer. Um, so Father God, I just thank you for today. I thank you for these moments. I thank you for 2022 because it's going to be a special year. Those that are tuned in, I pray that God heals your heart if you need healing, gives you strength if you need strength, gives you love if you need love. To be able to trust yourself and know to be bold, to jump in it, to make it happen, to trust God with all of your heart, to know that he will make it happen for you and that he loves you and that he wants to take care of you for the rest of your life and just know that God is doing it for you. If all else fails, if people fail, if the comment of something you hear fails, just go to God for it. If it's not lined up with your life, you don't have to receive it. You don't have to believe it. Believe what the Lord has told you. Believe what God is telling you. Believe what he's telling you. Believe in your heart. Believe in your heart. Believe with your heart. Trust it. And just let them operate in your life. Because I speak life into my life. We speak life into each other. We speak life into others. I speak health into my life. We speak health into each other. We speak health into others. I speak wealth into my life. We speak wealth into each other. We speak wealth into others. I speak love into my life. We speak love into each other. We speak love into others. I speak joy into my life. We speak joy into each other and we speak joy into others. So, Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for all the people on this radio show. Thank you for everybody that put in the work to get it done and for believing in themselves and for believing in you, Father God. And you're going to make a way and show us who you truly are in this year. It's in your name, Jesus. We love you and thank you. Amen. So like to start off with five key questions to ask yourself before you start your health journey. You know, I know it's important for people starting off this new year 
Maybe you started off your goals uh, at the beginning of the year, the first day of January. But if you haven't, you know, these are five key questions to ask yourself before you start your health journey. I know sometimes people get afraid. They don't know where to start, where to go. So these are some questions that I formed uh, for you guys that you can personalize. Um, you could personalize it with your actual physical health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. So what is my why? Okay. What is my why? What is your why? Your weight loss. You, do you want to lose weight? Is it because someone else told you you want to lose weight? Is it because uh, you just want overall health in your body? Is it overall health in your mind? You know, you have to ask yourself those questions. What is my why? Anytime you do something, what is your why? Figure out what it is, the key thing that is driving you to go do it. And do it from a place of empowerment. Again, some people push you to do something that you don't want to do. And then you'll want to go do it. And your why is because someone else told you to. So you don't want to live in that type of way. You don't want to be that type of way. You want to do it based off of an empowering place. My why is because I know my health needs more strength. I need my, my body needs to be stronger. I need to drop a few pounds because my doctor says um, I'm pre-diabetic. So now I got to be able to eat healthy. I got to be able to, um, I want to be able to have longevity in my life. I want to be able to be there for my kids. I want to be able to be there for my family. What is your why? What is your why? What is your why? What is your why? Restoring your health. Uh, living a health, healthy lifestyle. That's overall, that's all three. Living a healthy lifestyle. What you read, what you're feeding your mind. What does that say here? Apostle Faith Walters. Good morning, everyone. I enjoyed this beginning segment. Very insightful, inspirational, and enlightening. Really, really great. God bless us. Thank you, Apostle Faith Walters. But what is your why? When you figure that out, that's the starter. That's what you want to start off with. What is my why? And I'm getting excited because, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. The past couple of days, I've been like, all right, God, what are we doing? But right now, I'm excited because my why for what I'm doing, uh, whether it's health, business, is getting me excited and ready to go. And I'm ready to go do it. And I just keep asking to be prepared, God, to prepare me and for me to prepare myself. My second question is, what can I become? What can you become in this journey? What can I become? So once you figure out what is your why, what can you become? What can I become? Envision your lifestyle. Envision your, your smile. Envision your joy. Envision your peace. Envision where you want to go, what your body will look like what you believe you will become and what you speak will come to life. So whatever you tell yourself, whatever you're speaking into the atmosphere, whatever you're asking God for, he will give it to you. So what can you become? What can you become? What is it that you weren't before that you can become now? And that's how you want to live. That's how you want to start off. What can I become? A lot of times we don't look ahead. We don't see ahead. We don't envision ahead. I know uh, during my football journey, I would write down, and this is something I need to do right now, uh, probably when the show is over, start doing it. Before every game overseas, I would write down who would have a certain amount of yards uh, how many yards I'm going to throw for, what the score was going to be, and how many touchdowns I was going to throw. And even though it wasn't the exact numbers for each person, it, it, it totaled and equaled the same amount of yards or more, or maybe a little bit less, but I threw the same amount of touchdowns, 
the person one person had at least the same amount of yards or just passed a certain amount of yards, a hundred yards. I say a hundred yards is the example. A hundred yards, and maybe they got a hundred and fifteen yards. But I put those goals down the day of the game. I was riding it on the bus. And all that, all those things came to life. And those were my la the last four games were my best four games of the season. So when you envision things, uh, it comes to life and you become it. Whatever you believe, whatever you speak, whatever you write down and read, you will become it and it will happen. So trust it. And my next question is, who do I need to be during my health journey? Who do I need to be during my health journey? I mean, who do I need to be during my journey? Bold risk-taking, vulnerable, okay? You want to be vulnerable? You may be vulnerable because um, you may be vulnerable because can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so you want to be vulnerable. Sorry. You want to be vulnerable. I apologize. You want to be vulnerable uh, because, you know, it may be your first time working out. It may be your first time in the gym. You may feel uncomfortable with your body, um, but it's not about what people think about you. Uh, it truly is how you feel about yourself. And that's getting out of your comfort zone. You may not like uh, what your body may be looking like. You may not like what your body feels like. You may not like what your thoughts may be, but it's getting out of that comfort zone, being risk-taking, trusting the process, trusting yourself to achieve those goals, trusting yourself to be able to be the healthiest you can be. And you know, write those things down, write those things down. Why, why you're uh, afraid to go, you know, write those things down, write down who you can be, who you need to be, who do you want to be, uh, in your health journey. It's just important, um, because you want to create that lifestyle. And again, it's not just your physical because you need to train your mind, whatever your mind, again, your mind is going to go before your body. So if you don't believe in your mind that you can jump across a, a, a step or jump up off the ground, you won't be able to do it. You train your mind to do it, then your body's going to do it and it's naturally going to flow. And that's your subconscious. That's in sports. Um, someone throwing the football, you don't need to tell them how to throw the football. If Tom Brady's throwing the football, he knows how to throw the football. His body has been trained, but his mind has been trained to do it over and over and over again. So you want to create that habit. And my next question is, do I believe in the process? Now, do you believe in the process? The definition is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Do you believe in the process? I know in school at Utah State, we had a T-shirt. It said, trust in the process. It was on the back of the shirt. Uh, they asked me, do I trust the process? I said, yes. Uh, maybe at that time, I didn't know uh, what the process was going to be or exactly what it was or why we had it on our shirts. You know, 22 years old, we're just out there playing football. We're just like, we're going to go make it happen. Um, but trust in the process, a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Uh, that's what that means. So um, just understanding, do you believe in that process? Do you believe that when you take that leap of faith and you go into your hell journey that you will become everything that you wrote down, everything that you desired, whatever your heart's desire is, is this who you truly want to be? Do you believe that'll happen? And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Do I believe in the process? And that just goes back on faith for me. 
do I believe in the process that God is going to bless me with the facility, the gym of my dreams? Yes, I do. It may not take a month. It may not take two months. It may take three months, four months, five months, six months. But I'm okay with it because I believe in the process. And that's why it says actions are steps. Actions are steps. Actions are steps. Okay, that's the order. In order. Things need to happen in order. So as long as you're taking those, those leaps of faith and continuing to believe, okay, let's see, Apostle Faith, trust the process, believe and know all things are possible G with Jesus on our side. Thank you, Apostle Faith Walters. Uh, appreciate you. Um, but yeah, believe in that process. I mean, it may not happen the first day, right? Uh, example, sometimes when I'm training some clients, Apostle Faith Walters again, yes, patience is key as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, patience is key for sure. So sometimes when I train my clients, I hear them while they're working out, they're saying, I'm not in shape. I'm out of shape while they're working out. And in my mind, it's speak from an empowering place of I'm getting in shape right now. Not I'm not in shape because you're actually doing the work right now, which means you are striving and going towards your goals. I am getting in shape right now uh, instead of saying or compared to while you're working out doing push-ups, I'm not in shape. This is hard for me. Well, actually, you're doing it right now. So you are getting in shape. It feels hard, but you're making it happen. Again, it's just that first step. Step one is just believing and saying you can go do it and just making it happen. The hardest part is going to be you starting. Uh, people think because I was a professional athlete that it wasn't hard or didn't feel hard, you know, going into practice, going into camp, going in in shape, you know, even in college. Um, I didn't like to run. I, I can run. I knew I could run. My mom was a she run 5K, 10K miles. So I thank God for her creating me and I'm able to do the same thing and run. Uh, but sometimes I didn't like to run and I would wait and wait and wait. And I knew I needed to get in shape before I went to school. And man, I, I tell you that first day of conditioning for myself before I even headed back to school to get in shape was tough. I was all in shape with lifting weights, but it was tough. So it's not always going to be easy. Sad Brownie. True. It happens with my clients too. Breakdowns are a part of the process too. Learning is a part of the process. Not being clear is a part of this process. The process is the experiences. Yes. The experiences. And that's true because your experience, again, um, you know, experiences can change, change your life. And, uh, you know, we're going to go to the last slide. I believe it's the last slide. What is stopping me? What is stopping me? What is stopping me? Is it your old mindset, your old beliefs? Is it fear, bad experiences, unwanted experiences? Is it finance? Is it, um, is it too hard? Like, what, what is it? You know, understanding what it is. Understanding what it is um, that's stopping you, you know, you just got to think about where your mind is at. You know, you don't look at other people and what they have. I believe in this world, at least today, um, and I hope I am uh, changing an impact in the world on the view, on people's view uh, shortly and soon that God puts me in position to do that. But people will look at what other people have and feel like that's what they're supposed to have. And that's for them to have. Whatever is for you, whatever is for uh, you, whether it's your physical, whether it's your mind, whether it's your uh, spirit, it's for you. God's giving that to you. Whatever gifts he's given to you, Use those gifts. 
sometimes we look at other people's gifts and what they have and we think that's where we're supposed to be. But whatever gift they have, they're using that gift. And don't you want to use the gifts that God gave you? That's what makes you special. That's what makes you great. That's what makes you a champion. That's what makes you gold. That's what makes you worthy. Understand the gifts that you have inside of you and understand that God gave you those gifts. So he wants you to operate in those gifts, the way your body looks, your skin, the way you think, your intelligence. Use those gifts that God gave you and understand that he loves you and understand that you can operate in those gifts. So don't let anything stop you. Don't let what someone told you five years ago hold you back another five years. That's what that's what people do. I mean, there's things that I've been through where people would give me criticism or you could say constructive criticism. But because I was sensitive to what I was hearing, I took it personal. And it doesn't mean that it's true. When people speak things, yes, they can hurt you. But understand, it doesn't mean that's the truth about you. What do you truly feel about yourself? What is stopping you from the physical journey, the mental journey, the spiritual journey, your dream, your goal, whatever it is, what is stopping you and holding you back? Just understand that nothing can stop you. You are unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. And we serve an undeniable God that's unstoppable and extraordinary. So I'm thankful for this Get Fit segment. Um, everybody stay blessed. Follow me on create elite underscore LLC. That's my business page. That's my performance health and wellness page. C R eight E L I T E underscore LLC. And if you want to follow my personal page, uh, Deandre Burrell, it's my first and last name. Uh, please like share, comment, subscribe, and, uh, share to all your friends so we can get millions of people viewing this show from 7.30, from 7 o'clock all the way to the last show. So thank you. God bless. And everyone have a great 2022 and I'll see you next weekend. The name of my book is Reborn. And Reborn is a story, a personal story about my journey from a place of despair to fulfilling God's purpose in my life. I have gone through a lot of challenges, a lot of, uh, you know, things that happened to me in my childhood all the way to my adulthood. And the Lord impressed on my heart to write my story, to share with others, because, you know, one thing about me, I'm transparent. And I believe when you share your testimony is to help somebody else get out of their situation. Because a lot of us go through a lot of changes, a lot of challenges in life, especially uh, I grew up in the church world, a very strict environment, very religious environment. And it had a lot of, uh, you know, stressors in my life. I didn't know who I, who I was as a little girl. You know, I grew up with parents. My father was a pastor and I was uh, totally lost in this church world. I didn't know who I was or if I was worth anything or if I had any type of purpose in life. So my, my, uh, my vision about God was so uh, warped because I never thought God loved me the way they presented it. So I was a very lonely young lady. I, was, I had a lot of low, less, low self-esteem. So uh, I was just really trying to maneuver and to, to find my way, uh, you know, through life. So uh, it was God who helped me through the process, even though I wasn't focusing on him as much. Uh, I want to share something, you know, and uh, chapter two, uh, page 17, Forsaken. I just want to read a little excerpt of it. And it says... Um, in 1975, as I attended middle school and the family moved to a large four bedroom apartment building was that this situation, things began to worship, worsen for me. For instance, I was punished a lot. At times I never understood why. My father never believed that the Christian told lies. For instance, if someone from the church would report to him that they saw me somewhere and was doing something wrong, I would deny it. However, I would be told that I was a liar and received the beating for it. 
So I became so tired of constantly being blamed and beaten for situations where I didn't have any idea. So I tried harder to be good, but notice each time I tried, it wasn't enough. And I realized that each time I, I would speak things, my mother uh, would tell me to be quiet. And after a while, she developed a resentment to me. And, you know, so I struggled a lot to be a part of a family. I struggled a lot to be seen. I struggled a lot to be loved. And this book is to help others who are struggling uh, to find out who they are and find out their identity and who they uh, are in God and whose they are because it's so important to find who you are you find yourself because once you know who you are and knows who who's you are in God you know your life changes and, and then you you're on a path where you're evolving and growing and building and you are increasing in self-esteem and the more you understand yourself is the better you are how to handle uh, situations in your life and even handle people, you know, to work with people and, and to really uh, learn how to be empathetic, learn how to, you know, reach out in some way, shape or form and to be where, you know, can be there in the moment with that person because you understand where they're coming from. Because you see a lot of what they're being challenged with is the same thing that you were dealing with in the past. So when God delivered me, I was able to share this story in order to help others to heal. I'm, I'm coming from some place, a, a place of darkness. You know, a new me came forth, you know, and I'm like, God, this is a powerful title. You know, because it tells, it sends a message, you know, that when God uh, rejuvenates your life, it's like you are, you're, 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 you know, into a new person. You're very different. You know, it's like you start over again from scratch. You know, it's like, wow, you know, it's a new day, a new dawn, you know. So this title was so fitting for, uh, you know, my journey and where I came from. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. Hi, good morning, everyone. I just wanted to say Happy New Year, Happy 2022. My name is Shola Smith, and this you are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. I um, just wanted to thank everyone for joining us uh, on the weekend shows. Um, we have open and honest growth conversations to inspire, educate, and motivate. And we just want to uh, encourage you to be the change, be open to learning new things and being willing to do the work. Just want to thank everyone uh, from the broadcasters, from the executive producers. Uh, thank you for all that you do, all of the hosts. We hope that you have a prosperous uh, 2022. I'm super excited. This is my first show. <laughs> this is my first show and I'm super excited. So uh, just want to just welcome you guys, say good morning and introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shola Smith. I am a business consultant. I am an entrepreneur. I am one of those people who are always going to advocate for you starting your own business and uh, taking the leap and taking the leap of faith and jumping out there and actually going for it because you won't know what you're capable of doing unless you go ahead and shoot for the stars and, and make a move. So I'm always going to be that one encourager, that uh, cheerleader to encourage you and to push you to move forward and that is a little bit about me. I am Guyanese American. So my family is from Guyana, South America. Boop, boop, boop. So um, I am definitely 100% uh, Caribbean. I am, <sighs> there's nothing like being a Caribbean woman. I'm <laughs> there's nothing at all like being a Caribbean woman and just the culture, everything, the vibes. And I'm, I'm always going to excited to make sure that our people and our Caribbean people um, 
are put in positions to thrive, especially with entrepreneurship. We work really, really, really hard. And I think that it's time for the world to see how hard we work and, you know, what runs the blood that runs through our veins and how persistent we are uh, to be successful. So that's just a little bit about me. And um, I wanted to go ahead and to give some tips today on new year, new business model. And so being that this is the start of a new year, we have to make sure that we just have some tips and some plans in place in order to have a successful 2022. Now, some of you guys may know what a business model is. Some of you guys may not know what a business model is, but I will go ahead and explain to you exactly what a business model uh, is. Uh, so a business model is a company's core profit making plan, which defines the products or services it will sell, its target market, and its expected costs. So pretty much a business model is your overall plan on how you're going to make money uh, with the startup of your business. And you definitely need that to make sure that, you know, your business is profitable. So there's no one wants to work or no one wants to have a business and it not make money. In the beginning, it's kind of rough. You know, you're still, you know, trial and error. But the goal is to make a profit. Uh, so we do have five types of business models. Uh, so the first business model is the manufacturer. The second business model is bricks and clicks. I love that. And the third business model is the marketplace. The fourth business model is a subscription, so subscription-based. Uh, and the fifth business model is on demand. Now, these business models are just, these are just a few, there's tons. But I, I kind of narrowed it down to like the five um, major or more prominent ones. Uh, so the first one for the manufacturer. So um, this model base is on this model is based on a company making a product from raw materials or assembling pre-made parts into a new product. They would sell directly to their consumer or they will sell to the middleman. Uh, this is the most basic business model. And so the prime example for a manufacturer business model would be uh, Ford, the car dealership. Now, Ford, their whole business model is based on creating vehicles from scratch, from raw metal all the way to you're driving in your car and you're on the road going to handle your business. So Ford is a, a great example of a manufacturer. So if you're thinking that you want to go along the lines of creating or manufacturing a product, Ford would be the great, uh, would be the best business model to actually take a look at um, in order to emulate or use it as a reference for your business, depending on what type of business you are in. Uh, the next is uh, bricks and clicks. Uh, this model is, is, is designed for a company which has a physical and online store. The customer can either purchase the product in store or they can order it online and collect it from the store. This model offers the company a larger customer base to target as if they're doing business online and offline. And the perfect example, I fall victim to this every single time, is Target. Targets, the Walmarts. Um, Target has an amazing e-commerce online. You can order your things online. You can actually go and pick it up. You don't even have to leave your car. They can come and bring it to you. Um, but you do have that experience. They give you the option to have it either in store, you can walk in store and shop, or you can go online. And so that would be the best uh, description of bricks and clicks uh, if that is the business model that you are interested in. The next business model we have is the marketplace. Now, the marketplace is amazing. So the benefit of this model is that you don't need to have any inventory, no inventory at all. You are simply in the place which brings the supplier and the buyer together. So the most successful company at this moment uh, for the marketplace uh, business model would be Airbnb. In this model, the marketplace owner earns their profit from asking a processing fee. So with Airbnb, the great innovative, innovative um, thing about Airbnb is that everything is done online. You don't even you don't have to do anything. No inventory. 
you have a person that has a place, the place is vacant, they want to go ahead and have it rented out, they are going to match the buyer with the inventory, and it's just magical. So the marketplace is a phenomenal, phenomenal place. Um, that is a great business model. The person that came up with that idea to me is genius um, because you really don't have to do anything. You're just, you're the connector, connecting them together. So that's uh, the marketplace uh, example for the business model. Um, the next business model that we do have is the subscription. This model looks at offering a consistent service to a consumer at a monthly fee. The benefit of this business model is, is that you know on an ongoing basis how much money you should make each month. The most common example are subscription boxes or on-demand TV shows like Netflix. So Netflix is amazing. Everyone has Netflix. Now, with Netflix, you have to pay a subscription every single month in order to see the content that they have in their database or in their system. Um, and the great part about it is, is that you have an array of options of content that you would like to see um, once you're plugged into the subscription base. So this is a monthly base. So their customers are paying a monthly subscription every month to gain content. So that's the exchange. So that will be a subscription-based uh, business model uh, there. And last but not least, we have on-demand. With more consumers wanting instant gratification, the on-demand model has become more popular. An example of on-demand uh, on demand business model is Uber or a local company called Hailer. This model allows small businesses to mix new technology with existing infrastructure. Another benefit is it works well with the movement of people wanting to become freelancers. So Uber actually empowers other entrepreneurs to use their vehicle to make additional money. So not only is Uber fulfilling the need of getting the customer to where they need to go, but they're also empowering the entrepreneur, which I love, love, love. I love this type of business model because you're doing both. You're empower you're making money, right, with the service, but you're also empowering other entrepreneurs to be independent and to be freelancers and to be their own boss, right? And so that's all that we're we're always going to advocate for being your own boss. Um, so I do have five tips to creating a successful business model. Uh, you're going to determine your purpose. That is very, very important. You want to make sure that you know your whys. Why are you doing what you're doing as far as it comes to your business? You also want to build your vision. You want to build your vision because without a vision, the people perish. We all know that uh, scripture. Um, you have to know where you are going, where you are headed. And if you do not know where you're going, you do not know where you're headed you're already at a deficit and it's not going to work. So you wanna make sure that your vision is very, very clear and you wanna make sure that you stick to that vision. Uh, the third tip that I do have is to choose your business model type. So I just you know, uh, gave five different business model types, but there's plenty of them more. You have to do your research to figure out which business model type is the best for you and your startup business or your existing business, what category you fall into. The fourth tip that I do have is to identify your audience and you want to know who your target audience is. Who are you targeting your business and your products and your services? Who are you targeting it to? Is it women? Is it children? Is it family? Is it men? Is it uh, entrepreneurs? Is it, uh, you know, corporate America? Who is your target market? Who is your audience? So that way you know exactly who you're talking to. Uh, and the last tip that I do have is to test your business idea. You want to make sure that you test your business idea to get proper feedback uh, from people who are going to tell you the God honest truth. So that way you can make sure that your business idea is going to be successful. So I would recommend to do focus groups. I would also recommend to also um, run it by a few people. Don't be afraid to share your idea with someone else. 
Don't be afraid to um, talk about your business um, to random people, to people that you know. Usually, people that you know tend to just tell you what you want to hear. So you want to make sure that you're getting accurate and positive, constructive criticism and feedback so that you can make the proper adjustments uh, to kind of change and alter your business model or your business idea and improve. You're always, there is always room for improvement. It doesn't matter if you are a startup company, if you are a multi-million dollar um, business owner, uh, you have a multi-million dollar company, there's always things that needs to be improved. So I definitely would uh, recommend that you test out your business ideas, get some feedbacks, make some adjustments and go back to the drawing board and then go ahead and shoot with an action plan and go for it. So I hope that these five tips in creating a successful business model was very, very helpful for you. Um, I am, my goal for this, this uh, show, thank you, Satin, Satin Brownie. She said, great tips. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that you'll be able to use some and um, go ahead and uh, go ahead and start your business. Or if you don't have a business yet, um, that you go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm reading the comments as well. And your customers are your ongoing focus group and testers. I have learned to build as I grow. Absolutely. And I am a firm believer of that as well, that you have to. Um, you have to be able to build brick by brick. This is not something that is overnight. It doesn't really happen one, two, three. Um, you have to go it, into this with the mindset that you are building a structure. And so if you keep that in mind, you will be building it brick by brick. And you can't skip any steps because if you skip, skip some steps, the whole entire structure is going to come tumbling down. And we definitely don't want that. Um, yes. Okay. And so I just want to just thank you guys for, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The messages just popped up. Um, I just want to read some of the comments as well. It says entertainment. Now entrepreneurs have to also understand that building a business is a live process. So everything will not happen at once. Absolutely. Um, it will not happen at once. Um, a lot of people just only see from the time a successful business starts to the glory moments. There are a lot of in-between moments that you do not see. Those are the hard part. Those are the hard parts. Um, those are the parts where you have to go back to tip number one, determining your purpose. Uh, taking a look at your vision, making sure that you keep that in the forefront of your mind um, as well. So that way it can kind of get you through those hard parts to push you and thrive you forward. Uh, entrepreneurs allowed. Some people think that they can just have a great idea and that's it. Oh, absolutely not. The idea is not the only thing you need to have. It's more than that. <laughs> the idea is great, but you need to have execution and you need to have an action plan. And you have to have a consistent action plan that you can follow. And you have to be, it's so much more than that. That's a whole nother topic for another show. And I think that I, I kind of like that direction. Uh, thank you for that uh, idea. But um, it's more than just an idea. It is actually an idea. It's your network of people. Thank you, Satin. Um, also, it is your determination. It's your mindset. It's also your uh, personal development. You have to be extremely, extremely solid in your thinking. Your mindset is the biggest, biggest piece of this um, equation. Uh, being that it is the new year and, you know, what they say, new year, new things, 2022, I'm due, all of these different cliches, it doesn't really matter unless you put your plan into action. And so I am hoping that uh, with this show and uh, being uh, broadcasted and with this opportunity, I will be able to encourage more entrepreneurs to actually consider starting their business or consider starting working for themselves or being an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. Um, yes, and DeAndre did say you have to trust the process. 
it is very, very important to trust the process. Um, it's one of those things that you have to just be mindful. You have to remind yourself. This is why affirmations are really, really important. This is why guarding your eye gate, your ear gate, what you hear, being encouraged, being around the right people um, to encourage you, get you some, um, get you some friends who can keep you accountable to your business goals. Um, that is very important too, because sometimes you, you know the rough patches that you do have. It's easy to forget, but if you have someone that is an accountability partner that can, you know, remind you like, hey, show, you have a business goal that you want to complete. You told me about this. Yeah, sometimes you need that little reminder. In my experience, sometimes entrepreneurs forget that entrepreneurship is a lifestyle, a mindset, and a way of becoming. Absolutely. Entrepreneurship is definitely a, a lifestyle. You have to live eat, breathe, sleep, entrepreneurship. Um, sometimes you have to, you have to want it. And if you don't want it, you're not going to get it. So it has to be something, an extra drive in you that says, Hey, I'm getting up early this morning. I'm going to make some sacrifices. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to work on this to-do list. I am going to, you know, empower myself, uh, to be better. Yeah. You have to want it. It's definitely a lifestyle. And DeAndre said, and it, it is leadership. Absolutely. Leadership is very, very important. Um, naturally entrepreneurs, I believe all entrepreneurs are naturally leaders. Um, but you also can coach because everything needs to be developed. You also can coach, um, other people into, well, not coach, well, really guiding them into becoming an entrepreneur and just equipping them with the tools that they do need. And for those who hear that and think, oh, it's too hard, being an employee is also a lifestyle. We just choose which is more worth it. Now, I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. I worked in corporate America for years. And I worked in corporate America for years in the travel industry. And I was very, successful at what I was doing, but I was very unhappy with what I was doing. And the reason why I was unhappy working in corporate America is I, I well, for two things, I believe that I always knew that I was an entrepreneur um, and I was in this space that wouldn't allow me to break outside of this box. And I couldn't figure it out. I just knew I was frustrated and I didn't want it anymore. And it became, it came to a point where the money wasn't even worth it. Um, the money wasn't it at all anymore. Um, the checks were nice; they were, but I wasn't happy. I didn't have I didn't have peace. I wasn't doing the thing that I knew that God purposed me to do, and um, I prayed about it and I, I asked God to give me the wisdom to know what to do, how to get started, and I took a leap of faith and I jumped. I actually I left a great. <laughs> a great high end almost six figure corporate america job to start my business and i know for some people they might be like oh girl you crazy but i had to do it because i had no peace and i am a firm believer that you have to be where god wants you to be and you have to do what god wants you to do and there's an arrival time and if you don't make that choice and make that decision, he's going to make it for you. And when he makes it for you, it's not the easiest. It, it hurts and it's hard. And so I just wanted to make sure that I was, you know, focusing on what it is that he told me to do. And I wanted the peace. I wanted the peace more than I wanted to check uh, because at the end of the day, it, that's all that mattered. Um, Oh, you're so right. Oh, thank you. I, I, yeah, you, peace is very important. When you understand the value of peace, you'll go for it. For me, I simply could not invest my lifetime in building other people's dreams, absolutely, without having a stake in them. That is why I became an entrepreneur, to have a stake in where I invest, absolutely. And I became an entrepreneur as well to have a legacy for my kids, I have a legacy for my family. Um, and I knew that I couldn't get that in corporate America because there was always a cap and they wouldn't let you go outside of the box. You had to do what 
you you had to do what they asked you to do inside of the box. It had no room for growth. It had no room for anything innovative. There was no additional room for those type of things. Um, so I'm I'm happy that I left, even though it, it was kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> My family thought I was crazy, but um, I had to go, listen, when God tells you to do something, you better do it. So I had to make sure that I did what I had to do. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, if anyone else has any other additional questions or comments, um, you can feel free to let me know. I definitely want to thank all of the partners, subscribers, the supporters, the listeners, and the viewers from all over the world. We're definitely looking forward to this 2022 to being an amazing show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, and to click the notification bell so that way you know when we do go live and when we upload a, a new video. Um, Entrepreneurs Out Loud said, great show. Thank you so much. I am, I, oh, thanks. And I will come with a pen and a paper. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I'm a writer too. I, I love to chronicle and write down different uh, things so that I don't want to, so I don't forget. Uh, I have a long list of to do's. So I'm always writing, writing, writing. But yeah, definitely come with pen and paper. We're going to be giving up as many, giving out as many tips as possible so that um, we can equip entrepreneurs with the tools for 2022 to go ahead and start and make the leap. Even if you have started, there's always things that you can improve on. And um, I am going to actually have uh, some more uh, people or more guests that who come on that will be able to tell you exactly how they started. Because a lot of people want to you know, jump in to be an entrepreneur, but they really don't know where to start. So I would love to focus on the startups and for those entrepreneurs who have been in the game for a little bit, who can come on and share some of that knowledge with uh, other people uh, you know, to encourage and to empower them to let them know like, hey, we're all on this journey together and we're going to get to the arrival. Point. You're going to get to the destination but you have to start from someplace and you have to make sure that you have a, a nice structure set up for your business. Um, so definitely wanted to thank you. Definitely want to thank uh, you and me radio. Uh, make sure that you download on all of your digital platforms, uh, Apple, the App Store, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google, Podbean, TuneU, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Listen Notes, Carib Vision TV and also on uh, Connected TV. So definitely wanted to thank you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to be a guest and I am passionate about entrepreneurship. I, or I am all for all things entrepreneur. All things. If you're an entrepreneur, I feel like in my head, you're my best friend. <laughs> it's just that uh, my best friends, I have like tons of best friends that I haven't met as of yet. But um, if I know that you have a goal and it is to become an entrepreneur in my head automatically, I'm like, yeah, they're they're going to get it. They're my best friend. And whatever we can do to kind of link up and have the synergy and alignment um, in order to help each other. It, it's it's not a sprint. It is a race. It's not a race. It's it's slow. You have to build, 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 and it takes time. And the reward at the end of it is going to be so amazing. So definitely want to encourage everyone um, who is even thinking of starting a business or thinking of jumping into uh, entrepreneurship, just to encourage them. You have to start someplace, but just know in the beginning that you're in a building mode, you're a builder, you're a master builder, and you're gonna build this thing and you're gonna see this thing through. So definitely wanna thank you. I just wanna end with a quick prayer. God, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for all of the people who have um, contributed to the show and making the show a success. Father God, I thank you for all of the hosts. I thank you for all of the entrepreneurs and all of those who have goals. Um, to help assist you in your kingdom and kingdom building. Father God, I thank you for the viewers and the listeners that they were able to take away 
um, the tools that would be needed in order for them to continue to build with their business. And I just thank you that you keep everyone safe. I thank you for a prosperous 2022. We thank you for an amazing, keep in the forefront of our minds, an amazing mindset uh, to complete your will and to get it done. We thank you for traveling mercies for everyone. And we thank you and we praise you. We give you the honor and the praise in Jesus name. Amen. I thank you guys so much. I hope that you have an amazing day and catch us back here again next week. Same time. We will have a different topic and we will be able to go ahead and get everyone equipped with the tools that they need. And thank you so much for tuning in uh, to Business and Branding with Show. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Welcome to Entertainment Now on UMI Radio, WUMEDB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment. But with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Get fit. Mind, body and soul with pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. Welcome to the Wealth Mind Jet Show. As you just heard, I'm Marsha Gay Miles. I'm your host for today. And I am so excited. We are in a brand new year. It's 2022, a brand new me and a brand new you. Now, this is the Wealth Mindset Show. And this show was um, put together because we wanted to ensure that every single person that looks to pursue wealth especially if on the top of your list, you know, we're making New Year's resolutions, New Year's plans. Everyone is making those plans. Are you making plans for wealth? I would hope so. And if that is you, then this is the show for you. So the Wealth Mindset Show is here to renew your mind and ensure that you understand that a wealthy life is a result of a wealthy mind. And this show seeks to renew the mind with proven plans and principles philosophies that will establish the right paradigms for prosperity in all areas of life. Now, with a wealthy mindset, entrepreneurs, wealth seekers, business owners, employees, doesn't matter. You'll be empowered to activate, innovate, create, and elevate so you can serve in order to thrive and not just survive. We will inspire people of color to create wealth and to leave an inheritance for their children's children and a legacy in them, a legacy that creates a brand new generation for wealthy mindsets. Now, my journey is that I am an entrepreneur, I am an engineer, I am an employee, I'm a digital wealth creator, I am a lifestyle engineer, and so I have tapped into where multiple streams of income and wealth generation reside. But it only started because I fixed hair. I remember someone a few years ago said to me, it's your stinking thinking that has you sinking. 
Let me repeat that. Your stinking thinking has you sinking. And I know it sounds like something you would say to a child, but it's actually true. The word says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your thinking determines what you do. And therefore, if you want different results, you have to change your thinking. That is the source of it all. So with that being said, I recognize that I was only going to create wealth when I started renewing my mind and shifting my thinking to that that was conducive for wealth. We need to create a wealth environment in our thinking first so that we can create a wealth environment in our lives. I think you would agree with that. So at the top of the year, at the top of 2022, I'm here to say to you, let's start by renewing our minds, by shifting the thinking, by changing the mindsets. And that is really where the work is, because I promise you, when you fix hair and you fix all of hair, the rest is easy. The rest is honestly easy. Half of the time, you're stopping yourself because you think you can't. You're stopping yourself because you're overthinking. You're stopping yourself because you think and you think. It's always a think, think, think. You'll catch it later. But what I'm here to tell you is that we're going to shift the thinking in 2022 so that we can get the results that we want in 2022. All right? Amen? The church says amen. So the topic for my session today is something new in 2022. I just love that it rhymes. Something new in 2022. We have started a new year. And I'm here to tell you, for so many, you know, you thought that you'd have wrapped up everything and been ready for the 1st of January. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to give everyone permission to give yourself some grace. We are still at the beginning of a new year. I always say to people that you're going to get happy new year from me all the way until January the 31st. Because as far as I'm concerned, the year is still new. As a matter of fact, if I hadn't, if I don't greet you and I meet you and it's March and I've never greeted you since then, you're going to get a happy new year from me. The point I'm trying to make is the new year, the new intentions, the new goals, the new you, it starts whenever you want it. So you don't need to wait until a date, the 1st of January. You don't need to wait until a start of a new week on Monday. You don't need to wait until a specific, you just need to decide when. As a matter of fact, that is the turning point whenever you make a decision. So I would hope that one of the things I like about a new year is though it's just another day on a calendar, it has a lot of people getting very reflective. People get into a lot of, um, you know, yeah, reflecting and introspecting and all of that. That's excellent. And that's what I love about a new year and the end of an old year. It puts us in that state because the reality is we're always just on the go, go, go. And sometimes we just need to take some time to sit and to think, to think. You're going to hear me say the word think so much. And I'm going to remind you of this because I'm going to be re recommending a book at the end of this session so that you understand why it's so important for us sometimes to just slow down and think. That's it. It's actually the key to everything that we need. So now that we have taken some time to slow down, it's the 8th of January. If you still haven't done that, that's okay. Take the time. Take a few days. Take a day. Take a few hours and just sit and think. Ask yourself the questions. What do you want in 2022? What are the new intentions that you're going to set for yourself in 2022? What are the new goals in 2022? And please, when I say goals, I realize I want you to understand, and I'm not going to train on that today, but there are different kinds of goals. There are the goals that you know you can accomplish, like the A-type goals. They're the goals that you know you have to stretch to accomplish. That's the B-type goals. And then you have the C-type goals that you're probably going to need some help and mentorship to actually achieve. When you write goals, just write them all. Write all of them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to challenge you. One of my mentors has challenged me to list a hundred goals. Write a hundred things that you want. It may not happen in 2022, but you just need to know what do you want? It's your life. You're the star of your show. 
What do you want? And then when you list that, I want you to list who you have to be. What version of you will you have to become to achieve those goals? Because these are new intentions, new goals, and a new you. And it can happen in 2022, it can happen in 2023, it can happen in March, and it can happen in the next five years. But here's what I can tell you for sure. The difference between wealthy people and average people is that wealthy people actually set goals. The average person wishes, the average person dreams, the average person hopes. There's nothing wrong with a hope, a dream, or a wish. But if you have not written it down, like the word says, write the vision, make it plain. If you have not established, written those plans and committed them. So God is a God of planning, right? You must write the plans and commit them to him so he can establish them. You know, God says, I know the plans I have for you. You have got, you got a plan. You got to write it down. You got to set some plans in place and then let the rest to God as you work on it. Time will pass anyway. Would you have gotten closer to goals that you wrote down? Would you have gotten closer to those plans being realized? Or would you be saying next year? at the same time, new year, new me, new wishes, and write no goals, no plans. You keep repeating that cycle. We're not gonna do that in 2022. You see, this is the year we're going to see something new. God is doing a new thing, that's for sure. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? Are you planning for it? Are you setting goals for it? Now, today's episode, we're going to be sharing with you our intentions, our goals, and our views on new us, <laughs> us is we, right? We're going to share views on how we think we should be at the end of 2022. And when I say we, I mean the weekend crew. So I have actually asked the weekend crew host to help me answer the following questions. And they will be sharing their responses with each and every one of you that are listening. So maybe you can get a few ideas of how we are thinking and some of the plans that we have, and maybe it will inspire you to now sit and make a few plans of your own, make a few goals of your own. So here are the questions that I've asked. First of all, you remember where to reflect. What was your biggest lesson in 2021? Like, what was your biggest lesson in 2021? I'll give you my answer. My biggest lesson, faith is the key. Faith is the key. I saw my 2021 passing, and I realized that every time I was sweating and straining, I wasn't getting done. Nothing was happening. But the moment I understood the assignment, <laughs> right, and realized God's got this, if he's called me to it, He's going to get me through it. And then it actually happened. I learned that faith was the key. That's all. Faith is the key. The second question is, what was your biggest blessing in 2021? I think my biggest lesson became my biggest blessing. That faith is the key. I literally grew in faith. So I actually am approaching 2022, a brand new me, because I have more faith than I did last year this time. And I'm so excited because, hey, more faith entering a new year means more faith moves in the new year. huh? So I'm excited about that. Now, the third question is, share three of your top financial goals for 2022. I have no problem sharing mine. My first one is I want to make sure that I put aside, no joke, 12 months, 12 months of expenses just in an account sitting down. I'm challenging myself to have a year of expenses sitting down in an account. I also want to build a six-figure crypto portfolio. Yeah. And um, I know that to be able to do both of those, I'm going to have to 3x or 5x what I'm earning. So multiple streams of income will be my mantra for 2022. And smart income is going to be my mantra for 2022. Those are my financial goals. The fourth question I asked was, Share five of your affirmations or self-talk that will be carrying you through to 2022. 
I love vines. I'm like, I'm a child of God. I'm called. I'm capable. I am the one. And I am more than enough. What are your five? List five characteristics that will describe the person you intend to become in 2022. Now, for me to achieve all the things I desire in 2022, I'm going to have to be filled with faith. I'm going to have to be focused. I'm going to have to be committed. I have to be an executor. And I have to follow through. Yeah, those are some of my characteristics. And then share your top three spiritual or faith goals for 2022. Well, my top three is I want to be walking faith. <laughs> I want to be full of faith. And I want to only operate in purpose. And those are my answers. So now I'm going to invite some of the other hosts from the weekend show to join me and share their answers to these questions. Now, they're only going to answer three of them. I answered all, all six of my questions. But they're only going to answer three of them. So first of all, I'm going to have Miss Shola. You just heard from Miss Shola. She prayed us out a while ago. That was a powerful prayer. I received it in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Shola. And I have Jesse. Now, um, Jesse and Shola, Jesse's and branding Jesse's weekends. I'd love for you ladies to share your answers. Now, I want you to tell us what do you need? What? Which one of the answers you're answering? Which one of the questions you're answering? Sorry, you all are distracted. Which one of the questions are you answering? And um, and then share your answers with us. And of course, yes, we love our amazing producer, Miss Coach Raquel. Please join. Please join. Okay, awesome. So, ladies, you have the floor. Go ahead. Or you know what? Let me do it this way. Who wants to answer the question? What was your biggest lesson in 2021? Oh, 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 sir. Go ahead. Okay. So my biggest lesson in 2021 was, uh, well, COVID, the pandemic happened 2020, right? And so 2021 was like the after effects and everyone's kind of like figuring it out. So I think that the biggest lesson that I learned is that one monkey does not stop a show. So you just have to keep pressing forward and continue to keep going. Do not let any obstacle, whether it's a pandemic, <laughs> whether it's a person, do not let anything stop you from achieving your goal and to kind of press and push past whatever that obstacle is. And, you know, think outside the box and learn how to you know, figure it out. And I think that that was a big lesson for me because I'm so used to just everything being structured that sometimes when you get like a curveball, it takes you a little bit to adjust. So I think that that was one of the biggest lessons for me in 2021. I feel you on that one. I 100% feel you. That's why faith is the key was mine because the curves kept coming. And I'm like, absolutely. And they wouldn't stop. <laughs> please well praise god praise god right. all right jesse how about the next question what was your biggest blessing in 2022 uh well uh, 2021 okay 2022. <laughs> <laughs> we got so much so um my biggest blessing in 20 you can put that on me i thank you god i know i'm gonna get some of this year um but in 2021 my biggest blessing was actually favor that he had from me that he's given to me from 2020 i explained that in terms 20 everyone you know shut down everything like that and i was in a job i'm in healthcare, and i explain it on my my show but um i'm in healthcare. i'm also an entrepreneur like you guys and at the time i didn't like the job that i was in in my health care and he moved me up out of new york city to Buffalo, New York, which is eight hours away. I don't wow. have a car, guys. I don't have, and the the career that I'm in, which is orthoptist, I love it so much that I'm just like, wow, this is the, the, path, the path and the plans that he had for me. And looking back, I went through a whole bunch of stuff and I didn't realize the connections. Why do I need to do this? Why did I do this job I hated for a year? it was connections to the right people so mm -hmm. that was that was uh my blessing in 2021 my my career future career yeah 
No, yeah. that's that's absolutely amazing. When I tell you, God knows the plans He has for you. Sure does. We just need a trust, right? Yeah. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jesse. Now, Coach Raquel. Yes, I'm here. I, this is I'm gonna give you this question. <laughs> so this is where I know you're a boss at this, and I want and I want to hear it in the voice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I need you to share five of your affirmations for 2022. Okay. Um, I love me. One of the I learned me last year. I fell in love with me last year. And so oh for God. me this year, as a matter of fact, I have this app that I use called Self Pause. It's an affirmation app that I've been using. I was actually, it's so funny because I remember when I started my foundation, that's kind of what I wanted, an app that does affirmation. And then when someone reached out to me to collaborate with them to test the app and things like that, I was like, look at God. But um, my, my affirmations, I love me. I am divine and for a divine purpose. The right people will connect with me in the right time. I release and I receive. It's okay. I think I'm at number four. <laughs> I don't, I'm just mesmerized. <laughs> I am. And the final one I would say is, and it's a part of my biggest lesson from last year. I am motivated by positive things. No more negative motivations. Mm. I'm no longer motivated by pain. Mm. I'm no longer motivated by poverty. I'm no longer motivated by lack. And let me remove that word poverty and put lack instead because I don't believe in poverty, but I am no longer motivated by negative triggers. I am now motivated by positive experiences. That's great. So that, those are my motivations or self-affirmations moving forward. And I'll be stealing those because <laughs> me too. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Listen, I'll be re-watching this and I'll yes. be... As a matter of fact, favor, a favor I'm asking for yes. myself and the viewers. You can just, you know, cut that out and just put it up on the channel by itself. I will. I will. <laughs> we just hear it. Amen. Yes. All right. Yes. Um, okay, back to you, Shola. Shola, how about sharing three of your top financial goals for 2021, 2022? Jeez. Yeah, for 2022. So I would love to purchase my first home by the end. I'm giving myself until the end of 22, 2022 to make this happen. So that is a big financial goal uh, for me. Um, I also would like to invest more into me. And when I say invest into me, meaning me and my business. And um, also, I want to... I. <laughs> I want to be able to see a nice size amount in that bank account with like a few <laughs> extra zeros. I just, I don't even have to touch it. I just want it to just be there. Just let me open it up on the app and see it. Right. That is one of my, <laughs> that is one of the goals that I would like to see just by the end of the year, just make sure it has a, a lot of zeros there. Not going to touch it. Not going to touch it at all. I just want to see it sitting there. Awesome. I'm feeling you on that. Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. This is what I know works. You're going to take a screenshot right now of the bank account. Okay. And you're going to Photoshop the value and you're going to put it around you. Yes. Take yes. Pictures, I love it. Put it around love you. Love it. Love you will it. see it before you see it. Yeah. It's already Ooh. done. I love it. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, listen, we have DeAndre, Mr. Get Fit himself. He's on with us. So here's the one I want DeAndre to answer. DeAndre, what are your top three spiritual or faith goals for 2022? Say that one more time. Top three. Spiritual or faith goals for 2022. Okay. Well, one of them is just to keep staying connected with God and like just getting closer, closer to where I'm just operating in spirit, like just raising up my spirit, man, um, daily. However that looks, I don't know how, how it's going to happen, but um, whether that's praying and fasting um, just to get spiritually closer to God, 
just staying connected, um, being able to pray for others. Maybe I put a number on that now that we're talking about it. That's number two, goal number two. Um, I say pray for at least 500 people, you know, within a year. Pray for at least 500 people um, to help them get closer to God the best way God is showing me to do so. So whether that's one prayer, that's perfectly fine as long as I'm doing it out of the spirit and I'm helping them get closer to God or whatever they need healing from. Just take it from there and leave it at that. Um, And the number three, top three spiritual faith goals uh, to be able to be an impact in my church, um, operate in leadership. Um, I'm in leadership now, but just taking a bigger step in leadership, creating my own, maybe my own leadership course in church uh, or just in general, uh, because I know leadership is important and leadership's not just a word. It's doing things that you don't want to do when you have to do them. So um, as a leader, it may seem hard, but it's just what you're called to do. So that's another thing. This is my third goal is just to create a leadership, some type of leadership um, course or group to where we can empower each other. No, that's powerful. Everything rises and falls on leadership. I was on um, recently, or or church actually had a session on leadership. So I'll give you three tips that my bishop gave us on that session. And he basically said leadership boils down to three key things. You have to be passionate for God. You have to be passionate for people. And you have to be passionate about the purpose that God has called you to. Once you're doing those three things, you will automatically fall into leadership because... As you follow Christ, you know, you know what he says, follow me as I follow. Right. And that's it. He was the ultimate leader. So that's powerful, DeAndre. Thanks so much for sharing. And I'm going to give the last question to back to Coach Raquel. So her voice just wraps us up. Uh, What are list five characteristics that will define who you are as you grow in 2022? A lover, forgiver, lover. Okay, yes. Yeah, starting with myself, you know, and really truly activating love, not in the words, I love you, but to actually do it. Mm -hmm. And when I say love, real love, not what your, uh, what someone's understanding or explanation of it is, but how I see you respond to to my loving you. It's it's about... um, Loving in a way that someone feels and experiences it as love. And forgiving. I want to forgive quickly. I want to become uh, strong in the forgiving department. I want to forgive before it even happens, you know. Um, A strong person who meditates, you know, like really in touch and in tune with, with my peace and my mind and managing, intentionally managing my mind. Yes, yeah, so a meditator. <laughs> That's a word, but someone who meditates uh-huh. um, effectively. Also, I want to be someone who speaks truth. I want truth to be a characteristic. I wrote this prayer. All right. Did we lose you, Coach Raquel? Okay. All right. Well, we heard. We heard. Definitely heard. So what she did share, and I'm I'm with her. Definitely a lover, a forgiver, um, someone that is managing their mind and speaking truth. So um, those are absolutely all powerful. Any any final words? Just one word. To, to define what is your word of the year, 2022. So Shola, starting with you, what's your word? My word is going to be focus. Mm. 
You stole mine. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right, Jesse, what is your word? You stole my thing because I'm going to do oh, it sorry. a couple minutes from now. Girl. <laughs> but I will say um, one of them is seek. Seek. S-E-E-K. Mm -hmm. -E -E seek. S-E-E-K. Mm. Okay, seek. Can the, you other one, the other one will be <laughs> in a couple minutes. Okay. And then, of course, DeAndre, what's your word for 2022? Mm, I'm looking on. I got stuff on my wall right here. Um, yes. Really, just man, it's it's. I'm thinking right now, just doing, doing, like just going, doing it, doing. Yes. Doing, Show them, going. And DeAndre that's it. got my words. Show them, DeAndre, you hit my words. I'm just <laughs> focus and get it done. Focus and get it done. That's it. So listen, thank you so much for joining me. Um, DeAndre, Mr. Get Fit Shola, Business and Branding, Jesse Weekends. And of course, we had Coach Raquel, our amazing producer, for the weekend show here with me. Thank you so much for sharing. And I pray that you listeners, you will now sit down and ask yourself these questions. Write down your intentions and goals for 2022 and commit these plans to the Lord and he will establish them once they're in accordance with his will. Now the book of the week actually should be the book of the year. Think and grow rich. You'll understand when you read it, it's by Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. Take the time to think and process through your thoughts. Once you, as, as Coach Raquel says, when you become great at managing your mind, which means managing your thoughts, you manage everything else because your thoughts determine your feelings, your feelings determine your actions, and your actions determine your results. So thank you so much for joining us on the Wealth Mindset Show today. It's been your girl, Marsha Gay Miles. It's been an amazing show. I pray that you were inspired and encouraged and absolutely informed. You can absolutely connect with me on any of the social platforms at Marsha Gay Miles. And remember to like and share and subscribe Click the notification bell so you're always alerted when we are actually live with a new episode and share your comments so that we can absolutely formulate new episodes based on them. God bless y'all. Have a phenomenal new year. Focus and execute. That's what I'm about this year. What are you about? God bless y'all. Happy 2022. Bye for now. All right, everyone. And that takes us in to the weekend show and weekends with Jesse. How is everyone doing today? Morning, morning, morning. Hi, weekenders. I want to say a big, big thank you to our producers, our supporters, all the hosts. How was your new year? Happy new year. I am excited to let you in on today's show. So let's get right into it. So I want to first start into letting you know if you guys are a new listener or viewer, who am I? Who is Jesse? So I am a poet. I am an author. I am a health advocate for the Black community, media health advocate for the Black community, and I absolutely love talking about wellness and health and issues that are going on in the black community. And I know that right now it's the new year and we all have different goals for the new year when it comes to our health. And I wanna share with you a little bit more about my new year goals. And if you have any questions, I'll love to take them in the uh, comment section down below. So um, a little bit about me. I am, like Shola, um, a Guyanese-American. Um, my love for health really started from the birth uh, of me. And if you could go back to previous episodes, you can learn a little bit more about me. Um, but to sum it up, I was a preemie baby, was born at 24 weeks, and weighed one pound, five ounces. 
And unlike a lot of people or doctors may have thought that I wouldn't survive. And if I did survive, I would be a vegetable and or have some type of disability. And my biggest dis disability, quote unquote, is um, I have glasses and I have some asthma. Um, and that's pretty much about that. And the preface or the purpose of my weekend show is to develop a community where we promote healthy life for a wealthy community. It's a resource for the Black community educating viewers on health issues and providing access to a network of small Black owners and entrepreneurs providing support in healthcare. And I want to break it down with you in the three areas about me. I want to provide with you clean living and talking about health issues. So I want you to learn about how to protect your mental health and let food be your medicine. I want you to also understand the creative side and the creative release that is needed. Um, as a poet, as an author, I understand that you need to channel that side of you in healthy ways to release emotions. And I want to dive deep and share with you guys and bring with you some guests that help um, you understand how to use poetry, how they use poetry to motivate others, but also um, motivate themselves. And last but not least, um, be an advocate for your community, be a positive light and positive influencer and provide those resources to you. Um, I want to first start with my word of the year. I actually have two. Um, and if you were staying tuned with us on the previous show on Wealth Mindset, I told Marsha my word of the year is seek. That is one word. My other word of the year is to elevate. I want to elevate in everything and anything that I'm doing, whether that is health, that is financial, that is um, spiritual. Um, I'm on my own spiritual journey. I've told myself to do this every year and I've tried to read the Bible in a year. Um, and I always got stuck right around Deuteronomy, um, thinking that I could handle that. And then I just fall off. But this year I am sticking to it. I'm doing chronologically. Um, and I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, and it would be a part of my daily devotionals that I do. Um, so that is my New Year goals. Also to become a certified orthoptist. Um, that will happen this year. Um, so that is my, my goals. Let me know in the comment section down below what are your goals for the new year. And with that being said, we're going to dive into our community health check. So today's topic on our community health, we're going to talk about eating healthy. Now, since it's New Year's, we know that it's time, it's a time of the year where people make goals. And like I said, let me know in the comment section down below, what are your goals? And I know one of them is eating healthy. And according to medicalnewstoday.com, here's the top 10 benefits of being healthy. It improves your heart health, reduces cancer risk, you have a better mood, it improves your gut health, improves memory, helps with weight loss, manages diabetes, promotes strong bones and teeth, and last but not least, improve, well, improve sleep, that's number nine, and sorry, last but not least, develop healthy patterns for the next generation. What are your goals or some of your goals for the new year? Let me know. And how, how are you going to eat? How are you going to eat? What are your tips? Or do you need help with that? Because I'm about to share with you some top, top eight tips of how you can specifically eat healthy. And this information is provided by foodofactoflife.org. All right. Now, let's get into it. These eight practical tips cover the basics of healthy eating and can help you make healthier choices. Number one, you base your meals on starchy carbohydrates. 
eat lots of fruit and, fruit and veggies, eat more fish, including a portion of oily fish, number four, cut down on saturated fat and sugar, number five, eat less salt, six, give active and get active, sorry, and be health, be a healthy weight, number seven, don't get thirsty, number eight, don't skip breakfast. And now we're going to dive deep into each of these eight tips. So first, we're going to start with base your meals on starchy carbohydrates. So starchy carbohydrate foods includes potatoes, bread, pasta, rice, and noodles. Where it's possible, it's recommended that you choose a whole grain or high fiber versions with less added fat, salt, and sugar. Starchy foods provide energy or calories as well as dietary fiber, calcium, iron, and B vitamins. Did you know that starchy carbohydrate foods contain fewer than half the calories of fats per gram? Most people need to eat more of these types of food, especially those in high fiber. So try to include an item from this group in each of your main meals. Can you think of some ideas? You can have breakfast. So for breakfast, you'll have porridge or whole grain cereals. I love oatmeal in the for my breakfast. You have lunch. So that can be a sandwich made with a whole, um, whole wheat bread, um, a potato, whole rice grain salad. And for dinner, you can have pasta, potatoes, rice with an evening meal. Number two, eating lots of fruits and veggies. So we know we have to try to eat at least five portions of a variety of fruit and vegetables every day, five a day. Fruit and veggies provide a range of nutrients, including vitamins and minerals, such as folate, vitamin C, potassium, and dietary fiber. Fresh, frozen, canned, dried, and juiced fruit and vegetables, they all count. Potatoes do not count towards a five-day as they are a starchy food that we talked about earlier. And now we're going to go into portion. What is a portion? One adult portion of fruit or veggies is 80 grams. Young children may need less depending on their age and size. As a rough, as a rough guide, one portion is the amount they can fit in the palm of their hand. And on screen, we have a picture of a portion size. So that's one medium um, tomato or seven cherry tomatoes, um, one heap seed, two spares of broccoli, three heap spoons, seven strawberries, a glass of orange juice, an apple, uh, one slice of watermelon. Those are just some examples. But a way to look at it is if you look at a box of, I don't know, let's say cheese, it's on the back of it, and I'll have um, the portion size on there. So I'll say 15 cheeses equals this amount of calories. So if you have double that, they'll double the calories. Did you know one glass of fruit juice and smoothie counts towards five a day, no matter how much you drink? This is because much of the fiber is lost through juicing. Fruit juice and smoothies are also a source of free sugars and so, and, excuse me, they consume no more than a combined total of 150 milliliters per day. Our free sugar intake should not exceed 5% of total dietary energy. However, at the moment, on average, we are exceeding this amount. Number three, eat more fish. Fish is a good source of protein and provides many vitamins and minerals. Fish can provide essential nutrients such as protein, to, to your diet, and it's a good source of many vitamins. Oily fish are one of nature's food sources of vitamin D, which is important for bone health and is also a main source of long chain omega-3, which is important for your heart health. 
Number four, cut down on saturated fat and sugar. We all need some fat in our diet, but it's important to get the right type and amount. There are two main types of fat, saturated and unsaturated. Eating too much saturated fat can increase blood cholesterol levels, which can increase the chance of developing heart disease. Saturated fat is found in more in many foods, such as hard cheese, cakes, biscuits, pies, pastry, cream, and butter. And as we go to the next slide, I want you to try to cut down on foods high in saturated fat and replace foods that are high in unsaturated fats, such as vegetable oils, oily fish, avocados, nuts, and seeds. Did you know there's good evidence that replacing saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats can help lower cholesterol? Too many sugar-containing food and drinks consumed between meals is associated with an increased tendency toward tooth decay, especially in those with poor dental hygiene. Food and drinks high in sugar include sweets, cakes, biscuits, and some carbohydrate drinks. And I know, guys, I know vegan days, it is hard to cut down on our favorite sugar, be foods, and everything like that. But, you know... You're gonna try. That's another part of my health goal for this year to drink to drink more water. That that's one of mine, and we're gonna get into that. But drinking more water and my sugary, I don't really have too much of a sweet tooth, but cookies, cookies are a big thing for me. If it's in there, I'm gonna grab it. So I'm gonna try to not grab it as much. And I want to tell you a little bit about looking at the labels of it and how to measure it. So use food labels to check how much saturated fat and sugar foods um, it contains. So more than five grams of saturated fat per 100 grams of food means that it's high in saturates. More than 15 grams of sugar per 100 grams of food means that the food is high in sugar. You can also use the traffic light system on the front of, of, of your pack to determine whether the food is high or low in saturated fat or sugar. Eat less salt. And I know it could be a little bit hard. I know if you come from the Caribbean, sometimes certain foods, it's just really salty and you pour it in there. You try not to do that. You eat less salt. That is tip number five. Maintaining a normal blood pressure is important for your health. Eating too much salt may raise blood pressure and lead to stroke and heart disease. Most of our salt intake comes from processed foods rather than salt adding during cooking or at the table. So it is recommended to always check food labels for salt content. And did you know that adults eat no should eat no more than six grams of salt each day? Children under 11 should eat less. You can use food labels to help you cut down. When comparing foods, a high salt content is more than 1.5 grams of salt. <laughs> Sorry about that. Per 100 grams of food and low is 0.3 grams salt per less than 100 grams. Number six, get active and be a healthy weight. To achieve a healthy weight, we need to balance the energy from food and drinks with the energy we use up through activity. Being active can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and help maintain healthy weight. Being overweight or obese can lead to health conditions such as type 2 diabetes, some cancers, heart disease, and stroke. And being underweight can also affect your health. Get active. Young people, you should do at least 60 minutes of physical activity of moderate to vigorous intensity workouts every day. Adults should aim to be active daily and achieve at least 150 minutes of physical activity of moderate intensity every week and perform strength exercises on two or more days a week that work 
all the major muscles. And maybe one day I can have our coach DeAndre come on and talk a little bit more about that with us. All right. And a little bit, some activities that you can do to maintain your active lifestyle, brisk walking, gardening, using the stairs. Yes, if you can, if you're in a public place, try not to use the elevator or escalator if they have it. Use the stairs, um, playing, dancing, cycling, skateboarding, organized sports. So that's basketball. If you run, track and field, gymnastics, uh, baseball, whatever you do, do a little bit of that. I am also on my own health journey or weight journey, um, trying to increase um, strength, muscle tone, um, put on some few pounds. Um, so that are that is some of my um, weight goals for for the new year or healthy goals when it comes to exercising. Tip number seven: Don't get thirsty. Around two thirds of the body are made up of water. We lose water throughout the day when we breathe, sweat, and use the toilet. When our bodies do not have enough water, excuse me, it should be up there. So we are on tip number seven. Okay, so when our bodies do not have enough water, we are said to be dehydrated. We need to drink around six to eight glasses of fluid every day to stop us getting dehydrated. More when the weather is hot and when we are active. And I have a, a tip that I found. This was through social media. I want to share with you guys. Um, so... Sometimes you could tell how to tell that you're dehydrated because if you, the minute you think that, oh, I really need something to drink, you're already dehydrated the minute you feel that. So there's a tip that I saw. Take your finger and you pinch, you pinch your little, that little area, your little knuckle area, and your skin should just instantly deflate back down to straight. And if, if it's still up like that, hope you can see it, if it's still pinched up, that means you're dehydrated and you should drink some water, more water. So mine went down a bit, but you could see, I don't know if you can, it's a little bit, I, I, I need to, uh, I need to, I need to, I need glass, I need glass. Yeah, it pinches, it goes back Okay, but I need a glass of water. I need to, I'm a little bit dehydrated. So that's a tip for you guys. Um, if you want to know whether you're dehydrated or not, don't be like me. Do not be like me. And last but not least, do not skip breakfast. Eating breakfast provides us with energy as well as some important nutrients that we need for good health. Breakfast can help to increase con concentration and alertness during the morning. For example, a healthy breakfast of whole grain breakfast cereal or a slice of toast with low fat spread. Um, I also love peanut butter for that. A glass of fruit juice will give our bodies the energy and nutrients we need to start each day. And that is our eight tips on how to be healthy and how to eat healthy. And for our special feature for today, I want to bring on. Coach Raquel. Um, we previously had a guest and she was unable to attend, but I want to bring on Coach Ra Raquel to talk about something called ASMR. And she's going to talk about how that improved her eating habits. Coach, thank you so much for coming on the weekend show and weekends with Jesse. I hope you're having a great start of to your new year. I am. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to fill in. <laughs> Thank you. I, you know, every opportunity is a great opportunity. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. So can you tell us briefly about ASMR and how that affected your diet or Im improved it? Okay, so according to the online dictionary, well, sorry, that's Wikipedia, it's ASMR is autonomous sensory meridian response. 
<laughs> just okay. sharing what the, it means. Sometimes auto sense or immediate response is a tingling sensation that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine. And you can read further on that. Just wanted to give an understanding of what that is. Um, so I started watching ASMR videos about um, in 2018. Um, yes, in 2018. And it completely changed how I see food. One of my favorite, well, the, the channel that I started watching, it was SAS, ASMR, S-A-S. Mm -hmm. She yep. is Asian, but she, the, she, the way she eats really, it kind of opened my mind to food mm -hmm. and changed the, my perspective on how I look at food, right? Mm. Because before, I, I really had two perspectives of food. Um, a terrible relationship. One was, oh, food can be so horrible. <laughs> you know? Horrible? Yes, yes, horrible because it's, for me, this is how I saw it. It's like, it's so tempting, but then it's not as favorable to my body. And the second thing that was affecting me was for me to really eat food, healthy food, clean food, I had to cook and I don't like to cook. <laughs> and I, yes, eating out was very difficult for me because it would always make me sick. So I couldn't eat out. Mm -hmm. So I had to. So every time I tried to eat healthy, it was such a challenge because um, I had to use recipes and then it was just a lot of work, I felt. And mm -hmm. because I was cooking for me, it was even harder. Because to do it for someone else seemed more meaningful at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My perspective has since changed. But I just felt like if I'm doing it for somebody else, then okay, at least someone else is going to enjoy it and things like that. Right, yeah, for myself, right. Like, yeah. Yes, you know what I mean? But um, mm -hmm. as I started watching um asmr channels and it's something that, that i do to relax me so when i'm done working or at nights it's often the last thing i do before i sleep um mm -hmm. not just food asmrs but also um sounds like nature sounds um, but yeah. asmr is something that i am heavily into um so as i invested time watching her eating over and over i i learned i fell in love with vegetables I fell in love with Thailand too. <laughs> that's where she's I love going. Thailand. That's that's yes. on my list. That's on my show. I am going there. I fell in love with Thailand too, but I fell in love with vegetables because as I watched her eat, it's so funny because even as I listened to her eat and I heard the crunchy and all of that, I started like as I started paying attention to it, I would notice the food that crunch and the ones that don't have any crunch and the, mm -hmm. and all of that, and I just started realizing that. It's funny, I just started connecting even foods with just life and God and, yeah. and nature, you know? And I, yeah. I started learning, this was my own processing where I started learning processed foods to me are like dead food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's lifeless, right? Yeah. And, re and like real like fruits and vegetables, when you bite it, for example, there's a crunch. It's like it has life. Nice. You know what I mean? So it, it's mm -hmm. just how I was processing, processing it myself. And so now um, my, my eating is so different and it's not because I'm trying to lose weight because that was one of the blockers for me as well. Mm -hmm. Constantly trying to lose weight gave me a negative, um, a negative yeah. perspective of food and a very mm -hmm. poor relationship with food because my, mm -hmm. my, my whole well-being now was becoming about food. Right, you know? right. And so... I was like, no, because I was someone for a long time that does a lot. I was in the gym. I was the, the diet person. And then I just stopped because I'm like, I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And then I was so happy that I found this because now cucumber, for example, is such a good. Um, I love it. Yeah. Like now I love food. Like I love protein with vegetables. Now, yeah. I, I didn't even realize before watching ASMR that I could actually eat cucumbers with fried chicken mm -hmm. and I and I don't have to prepare it in any unique way I could just yeah just eat it like it's regular food you know like, food, just yeah. like it's regular and, and and it could just be me I don't know maybe other persons are different but for me is the way I was approaching food had this 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 energy behind it 
you know, it had a negative energy behind it. It was always, uh, can I afford it? Is it going to make me fat? It was just so many negative thoughts around food for me, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if it has ever happened to you, but that was what was happening to me. And yeah. I, I had to change. And, and I remember one of the biggest change came when I one day, one day I decided I'm going to buy food for the entire month. You know, because I'm now saying, okay, I'm trying to change how I deal with it and, and I'm going to mm -hmm. cook it so that I'll mm -hmm. actually eat it and stuff. And the food spoiled. And mm -hmm. I realized and I learned that it wasn't the food or the lack thereof. It was my mindset around it. Yes. Yes. And so ASMR helped me or helped me learn about food and, and, and how to appreciate it in a different mm -hmm. way. I hope I answered. For me, it was, um, I know we have only two minutes left. For me, as I'm on um, my own food relationship journey, it's not bad, or my own weight goal journey. Um, and for me, I learned that I had like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. And I learned how my body breaks down. I never got the signal in the brain to snack. Yes. So I would just eat like, 500 to 1,000 calories for breakfast and then wait for a long time and yes. then the same thing for lunch and then wait for a long time and then the same <laughs> thing for dinner. Yes. And like it just rapidly goes. And I, I, with my research, I realized just eat small. And I'm yes. like, how am I supposed to eat small? I'm like, no, eat small. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do small for yes. breakfast and then eat a snack like two to four hours later. It's kind and of what babies eat, isn't it? I had to do, I had to train had myself to learn. Yes. and learn it. And the minute it took, it took my body like a week or two, but mm -hmm. after those two weeks, if I didn't have a snack, yes, I would, I would go hungry. And I'm like, I could see and I could feel my body changing. And I'm like, that's yes. the relationship that you have to have. Yes. Um, yes. And I'm on that journey. So I will share yeah. with you. Yeah. One this, of the things that I, I also learned just before you go is, as about that snack thing, right? The other day mm -hmm. I got up and I went into the kitchen. Usually I wouldn't pick up like a carrot and eat it. Like I really wouldn't unless I'm, I'm like, I'm on a diet, you know? Right. And mm -hmm. I no longer buy for about two years now. I don't buy snacks anymore. I, I don't buy snacks. Like every, if, like, if, like, I mean, like when I go shopping, I used to buy snacks and I don't do that. If I feel like a snack, yeah. I'll buy a snack and have it. But I don't yeah. shop. I don't, I don't store shop snacks. For I mean, that's what I should right. say. I don't store it, mm -hmm. right? So I got up and I went out and I just felt like having something. And I, 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 I didn't have an appetite and I didn't know what. I know I wanted something to eat, but I just didn't feel for anything. Yeah. Because in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have to prepare something. And then I went. And I mean, just like Otto, I went, picked up a carrot, I started eating it. And I'm like, oh, this is really nice. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, whatever did I not think it was? And it's not because I didn't think it was, it tasted good. It's, it just, it was so different. And, and it's because I have changed how I look at it. I have changed mm -hmm. the, the relationship that I have with it. So I no longer pressure myself to have or not to have something. If I'm hungry, I eat. And one of the things I learned about my metabolic system, because I thought that I was, I used to think I was always constipated. And that's not true. That was not, that's mm -hmm. not who I am at all. The less I eat, like when, when you talk about the snacking, when I eat mm -hmm. in portions, like the six times a day, as opposed to the one, two, three, or three times a day, that mm -hmm. when I eat less, the more I go. And so now I just trust my body and I, and yep. I, I respond to my body now. So yep. if my body says you are hungry, because sometimes I'm like, why do I feel like I'm having a pain? Did I not eat today? <laughs> you right. know? Mm -hmm. um, so now I listen to my body as opposed to me telling myself what I'm supposed to eat, when I'm supposed to eat it. To eat no, it. Yep. What, what I've learned to do is to, I've fallen in love with me. And as I fall in love with me and, and I, I start learning me, and start respecting and, and, and taking care of me, then I learn my own rhythm and I follow it. And I have to, yeah. I, I'm so thankful for ASMR because it has really, really, truly helped me um, fall in love with vegetables, becoming more in harmony with eating. And, and, and then that's why they're so successful on YouTube. That's why mm -hmm. they're so successful yeah. because they really serve a purpose. And so thank you for having me on the show. You're so welcome, Coach. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Always lovely to have you. And <laughs> last you. quick tip I saw, um, if you have any little ones that are struggling with veggies, um, I saw a mom blend up carrots and cucumbers and stuff and blend it into like a paste 
and made it into like as the base for like a pasta sauce. And that's that was it. The kid just ate it all up. So that's a tip that I wanted to share with you, with you all. That being said, thank you so much for joining Weekends with Jesse. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, click the notification bell so you can be tuned when we go live and when we upload a new video. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I'll see you next time. It's Weekends with Jesse, a resource for the community. Black health is black wealth. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Be the light. Ati. Apostle Faith Live, with children, reading Bible stories. To be on the show, go to wamo.org forward slash media, to apply. Tune in every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. For every child, everywhere. Do not miss out on the fun. Keep watching. Good morning, Good morning. children. How's everybody doing today? Are you ready for another time, another show, to hear about the greatest story ever told? Yes! Long ago, in a place called Nazareth, there lived a young woman named Mary. What was her name? Mary. And who was she supposed to be? Jesus. That's right. You gotta talk loud. Okay? And oh, oh, did you remember the age of Mary? She was a little girl. She was between ages 12 and 14. Okay? She was engaged to be married to Joseph a carpenter and loved to daydream about their future life together. When you daydream, what are you doing? Yes, you're just really thinking about things, fun things. One day as she swept her yard, Mary noticed a stranger smiling at her. She didn't know who it was, and she was frightened. My name is Gabriel. And who was Gabriel again? An angel. Yes, very good. Yes. Excellent. Yes. The strength, I have brought you a message from God. Mary was too amazed to speak. Don't be afraid, said Gabriel. God has chosen you to do something special for him. Soon you'll have a baby. He will be God's own son and he will be king. You ought to call him Jesus. Jesus. Mary trusted God, so she agreed to do what he asked of her. But Joseph, blue, felt upset. Yes, yeah, show me when you're upset. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you go. <laughs> because he knew he wasn't the father of the baby. Would you be upset as well? Yes. I love Mary, but I don't know if I should still marry her, he thought. So he prayed to God for help. He wanted God to make sure you're doing the right thing and not change his mind concerning Mary. Because Mary was a special girl that was chosen by the Lord. Right? Chosen by the Lord to do what? To carry. Yes, very good. God heard his prayers, and that night he sent an angel to visit Joseph in a dream. The angel was gentle and kind. Do not worry, Joseph, he said. You should marry Mary and love her as your wife. She is the most special of women, chosen by God to be the mother of his son. The baby will be named... What's the baby will be named? Jesus. Yes, talk it out. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Which means Savior. Because he will save his people from their sins. Ah, ah. Everybody got it. Very good. When Joseph woke up, he decided to marry Mary right away. I trust in God, he said. So Mary and Joseph were married, and they waited patiently for the baby to arrive. See? They got married. Wow, look at that. Yes. You see the angels? Yes. Point to it. You see the angels? Dove. Who's this? Yes. Who's this? Whose hands is this? Anybody know what that is? And what's, what, who's this right here? Mary. Yes, Mary be pregnant and you know they got doves represent, they got yes. married. Mm -hmm. Okay? Angelic doves. Okay. 
Soon after the wedding, Emperor Augustus, who ruled over the land where Mary and Joseph lived, decided to make a list of all the people in his empire to make sure they paid their taxes. He sent out orders throughout his messages to every town and city in the land. Everybody must travel back to the place they were born to be counted, said the messengers. Joseph had been born in Bethlehem, far away from Nazareth. My wife can't travel now. She's going to have a baby. Soon, Joseph said to this messenger, she should stay home in comfort and not travel far away. Can we go to Bethlehem another time? The messenger shook his head. No, he said sturdy. This is the emperor's order. You must go now. The journey to Bethlehem took many days. The roads were bone dry and thirsty, and the sun beat down. Often Mary had to stop and rest. Ah, oh, so tired because she's pregnant. She's carrying a child. Can you travel so far? to go back home to where you came from. You're in another place and you're carrying extra weight. Can you carry all that and travel and be where you gotta go in time? No. You think she'll make it? No. We'll see. At last, late one night, they arrived in Bethlehem. Oh, they finally made it. Joseph looked at Mary and saw how tired she was. We'll find a place to stay for the night. He reassured her, but Bethlehem was packed with people who had followed the emperor's orders and everything they tried was full. You know, when I was reading that, I wondered to myself, that wasn't a sound. Right. Mm -hmm. You ever think about that? Yes. yes. You know, because yes. all of a sudden now they wanted uh, 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 the, the family to go back to a place where they came from. Right. Okay, to be counted. They're not living there anymore. Okay, and now they got to go back. Okay, so that's something strategically set up. So the king set this up so as to rearrange everything. So the order of how Jesus' birth is going to take place is going to be specific. It's going to be special. It's going to be unique. Okay, so he is not going to be, you think he's going to be born in, in an in a inn or in a, in a hotel? No. So this is this is strategically set up. They reached the very last inn in town, but the innkeeper said there is no room. You have to try somewhere else. What can we do? Pleaded Mary. My baby is coming soon. The innkeeper was a kind man and gay and saw how tired Mary was. Come with me, he said. I have a place that might do. Isn't he a nice innkeeper? Yes. yes. The innkeeper led them to a barn behind the inn. I know it's not much, said the innkeeper, but it's warm and dry. Would that be all right for baby Jesus? Yes. yes. Mary and Joseph looked inside. The barn was filled with animals and the floor was covered with fresh hay. My baby will be safe here, said Mary. Thank you for your kindness. Later that night, Mary gave birth to a little boy, the son of God. Just as the angel had said, Joseph lined the manger with fresh hay to make a soft bed. Mary wrapped the baby in the blanket and laid him down gently. We will love you and care for you, little one, and we will call you Jesus, whispered Mary. So my wow. co-host is going to point to all the pictures. Wow. Look. Okay. Look at Jesus. Blue. Duke of Mary. Okay. Blue. Joseph. And the baby. There's the baby. What's right. his name? Jesus. Okay. Jesus. And there are all the animals, right? Looking on Jesus. See? Anybody see any chickens in the story? Yeah. yeah. There's some oh, chickens, yeah. right? right. Okay, wow. let's see, what do we see over here? Is it a horse? horse? Okay, horse, very good. Excellent. Nice. Excellent. High 
the inside nearby some shepherds were looking after their sheep. The night was dark and still, and the sheep were dozing peacefully. Suddenly there was a dazzling brightness in the sky, and an angel appeared. What's happening? cried the shepherds, huddling together in fear. Oh my God, what is this? Oh my gosh. Do not be afraid, said the angel. I have the most wonderful news for you and for all the people on earth. The Son of God has been born in Bethlehem. Blue, you hear it? Listen, listen, what? He is the king who will save humankind just as God promised. More angels appeared and sighed, glory to God wow. and peace to everyone on earth. Hey, yay! They are singing. They are happy that Jesus Christ is born. Then suddenly the angels were gone. The shepherds looked at each other in wonder. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can it be true? Said one shepherd to another. Without a doubt, the second shepherd replied, We must go to Bethlehem and see the baby at once. The angels ran down the hillside and through the dark streets of Bethlehem. They ran and ran until at last they heard a baby's cry and found the barn where Jesus was sleeping. He was such a nice little baby, wasn't he? Yes. We have come to see the new king, said Joseph. Excitedly, they told Joseph excitedly, God sent an angel to tell us about him. You are all welcome, said Joseph. So the shepherds went inside and saw Mary with a tiny baby in the manger. Wonderful, said the first shepherd. Our Savior, said the second, as they kneeled too great to, to gaze at him. We are poor. But we have no gift for him. They said to Mary, all we have to give him is our own love. That is the very gift, very best gift in the world, said Mary. So it was time for the shepherds to remit, to return to their sheep. They were so excited that they told everyone they met about the new king. Oh, Blue, you hear this? Who's the new king? Hallelujah. Yes, who's the new king? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, very good. Excellent. Yes. That same night, a new star appeared in the sky. Point to the star for me, please. My this is a star. This is a star? That's a star. Yes, yes. a star. Yes. Mm -hmm. In a far off land, three wise men looked up and saw it. They knew it meant that something very special had happened. This star must be a sign from God. It is shining because a new king has been born. Just as he promised years ago, said the first, we must go at once and worship him. Perhaps the star will lead us to the baby, said the second. Let us take the most special gifts. Said the third, gifts fit for a king. Hallelujah. Yes. Without delay, the wise men packed their bags, climbed on their camels, and rode off toward the city of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. They were sure they would find a new king there at the palace. Where else would the king be but in the finest of places, they said to each other. So who are these people right here? Who are these people? They're the three wise men. That's right. And what were what, what, what who were they looking for? Who were they looking for? Yes. And who told them about Jesus? They didn't know Jesus. So who told them? Who appeared to them and told them about Jesus? The devil. No. No, the devil wouldn't do that. The wolf. Who came to them? The wolf. An angel. An angel came to them. Yes. And angel Gabriel came to them and told them to come and meet 
Jesus. Yes. All right. So they, they traveled. So they thought he was in a special place. They thought that he was going to be in a fancy place. Right. Was Jesus born in a fancy place? No, he wasn't. Where was he born? In a barn. Yes, that's right. Talk it loud. In a barn. Yes, he was. That's right. The wise men traveled across many deserts for many nights until they finally arrived at Jerusalem. They were to they went to the palace and asked the gods to take them to the ruler of King Herod. Remember King Herod? Okay. Where is the new king? They asked him. We have traveled far. Fallen the new star that appeared on the night of his birth. Now King Herod was shocked. Why was he shocked? Because he didn't like Jesus to be the new king. Yes. He thought he was the one. The only king. He thought he should be the only king. There should be nobody else besides me. Was Herod being selfish? No. Yes, he was yes. very selfish. How can he just be you alone? Yes. There can be other kings. There's many kings in the desert. That's right. You got to share. Yes, who? My dad's a hacker. Huh? My dad's a hacker. Okay, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad is a king? Dad's a hacker. He's a what? Okay. He has kids. That's things. Okay. All right. Dad's a hacker. Your dad is named kid. That's right. Very good. Dad's a hacker. Okay. <laughs> All right. Why are you saying that? <laughs> Who is this new king they speak of? He whispered to his advisor. A prophet once said that one day a new king would be born in Bethlehem, said the advisor. This must not be, Herod thought to himself. I want to worship him too. Is that the truth? Was he telling the truth? No, he wasn't telling the truth. Herod lied to the wise men. Go to Bethlehem, then come back and tell me where he is. Herod planned to stop the baby from taking his throne. You think Herod could do that? Uh-uh. Because with God, all things are possible. Okay? So God will not allow Herod to hurt his child. Right. Okay? The wise men set off again into the night and traveled to Bethlehem, where the star led them to Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. We have come to see the new king, said, said to Joseph. They said to Joseph, You are most welcome, said Joseph. The wise men stepped inside and saw Mary with her tiny baby, the Son of God. Quietly, the wise men kneeled down to give the baby their gifts. Here is precious gold, said the first. I have brought sweet smelling frankincense, said the second. And this is myrrh, a healing oil, said the third. You will be a great king, a teacher, a leader, and you will save all the people of the earth. They said to Jesus together, then the wise men said goodbye and found a place to rest before starting their journey home. Do you see all the gifts? Point all the gifts. Okay. Okay. See. You got gold, the gold, frankincense, frankincense, and the myrrh. myrrh. Okay. Ah. Uh -huh. And the three. Well, who see gave it to the... Jesus? Yes. Who gave those gifts to Jesus? Yes. The three wise men. Three wise men. Very yeah. good. Excellent. You're doing very well. <laughs> There we go. While the wise men slept, God visited each of them in a dream. He warned them not to return to Herod. Why did he tell them not to return to Herod? What Herod wanted to do to Jesus? Yes. So they told them, don't go back that way because Herod is trying to harm the baby Jesus. So in the morning, the wise men went straight home and did not return to Jerusalem. When the king Herod learned that the wise men had disobeyed him, he was what? Angry. Yes, he was furious. How dare they do that to me? I am the king. How dare they? Oh, guess what? We'll see about this. I'm the only king, he roared. I will not let this baby take my throne. 
grow. Jesus was not safe in Bethlehem now, so God sent an angel to visit Joseph while he slept. You must wake up, the angel said to Joseph. Escape to Egypt, where you will be safe. Stay there until I tell you to come back. Joseph woke Mary, and they quickly loaded the belongings onto the donkey. Then with Mary carrying Jesus tightly in their arms, they set off into the night. Oh, they're running away. Yes. Yes. Jesus was saved in Egypt and he lived there peacefully with Mary and Joseph for some years. His parents missed their home in Nazareth. But while King Herod was alive, they knew they could not return. Then one day Herod died and Joseph had a dream. An angel appeared to him and said, Joseph, it is safe for you to return home. Joseph and Mary were overjoyed. They were happy. Clap your hands. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Blue. Come on. Blue. Blue. Hallelujah. Blue. Hallelujah. Blue. Yes. Blue. yes. Hallelujah. Blue. Yes. Yes. They packed up all their belongings and set off once more with Jesus by their side. When they arrived, they were glad to be back in their hometown at last. Jesus, Joseph told Jesus that he stood in the doorway of the little house. This is Nazareth, the town where we will grow up. He said with a smile, welcome home, Jesus. Jesus. Ah, ah, come on, clap your hands. All right. No, all right. No, 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 no. All right. All right. Beautiful. Welcome home. They finally came back home. Oh, yes. To where they they they, they belong. And because they, they were able to do that, it's a good thing they're able to come back home. That way they can live their lives. With their babies, in, right? Yes, in peace. Okay? And, and they were very happy. They were overjoyed. They were so ecstatic. They were yes. able yes. to come back to be in a place where the little boy, Jesus grew up to be a man. Huh? I'm John Oh, very nice. Excellent. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. That's very Okay, Excellent. Your turn. Okay, your turn, Blue. What is it that you drew? What is it you drew? A rainbow. A rainbow. A rainbow. Okay. Nice. All right. Well, thank you so much. Wow. That's beautiful. Look at all those colors. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Pretty rainbow. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, so Jesus represents a rainbow, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Did you say you was going to put a pool there too? They said Jesus was born near a pool. That what you saying as well? Okay, all right. So you say a rainbow. Okay, all right. We accept it. Thank you, Blue. I put a pool next to the rainbow. You put a pool next to the rainbow. Okay, okay. thank you. You didn't. The pool right here. Okay, but you changed your mind. Okay, thank you so much. All right, very Beautiful. good. Beautiful. All right, Sister Lana, you want to pray so we can close our session? Yes. Mm -hmm. Me, I want to pray. Come and pray. Okay. I want to pray. Oh, you want to pray? Okay. What are you going to pray? Okay, let's pray. Okay, you going to pray? Say you want to pray. I want to pray. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lana. Thank God that we stay here in. Read a story and read about God and Jesus. Jesus. And thank the Holy Spirit. Thank the Holy Spirit. That we have God. That we have God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Yes. God, this will be one. Thank you so much for joining in today. This is Apostle. Faith Live with my co-host, Sister Marilyn Tappin, and we have my uh, little children here, Sister London and Blue. And we're thankful that everybody joined in, and we pray that you were blessed by this segment, and we will meet again uh, very soon. And God bless you. Enjoy your day, and know that I love you, and Jesus loves you too. You can also see us on YouTube and uh, Facebook and all your social media networks. You can call us, our number is 914-699-2482.
And our email address is wamuministries at gmail.com. God bless you, and we'll see you again. Have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up, and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell.